Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. How are you? Hey, Rod, hey, PF Dennis, hey, Steve, hey, Tuxedo. Wanted to say thank you to, and it's not coming up, I apologize. Someone became a member off camera or off stream, and it was still on chat, but now it's hidden by the pinned message. Um, that is Nurse, Nurse Kate. Thank you for becoming a member. Fabrico, is that Jamie? The truck guy and Joe and GJ. Gaxon and John and James. Hey, Polar Ted. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Nuno. How are folks? Delvin. Delvin, you should have got an email from me today. I'm finally caught up. Hey, Ram. Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Joshua. Jason and Andrew and Hiro. Hero. Derek and Smadoo. Thanks for becoming a member. Hey, Barry. Hey, Mr. Grinch. Okay. We are back on the green V2. Hopefully we're going to move it around quite a bit today um, under its own, in an organized fashion. So, hey Skyrim, hey Cottrell, Richard, Hank, Cliff, K35, Shadell, Agent Monroe, <laughs> everybody. <sighs> I did finally get some design time in. It didn't take very long, I just had to do it. So let's see what we have here. Let's go with this view, which is gonna be off because I've been moving the cameras around, so bear with me. Yeah, that'll probably work. Hey Minch, Maddie. Have you made any aluminum chips on the Milo yet? I have not. Um, I am going to be in a state for the next three weeks of constant cycling through projects, um, circling around and making project or progress um, as I can until the Colorado trip. So it is going to be, um, I may and I should, I will be making chips on aluminum chips on the Milo if all goes well before I go to Colorado because I kind of need to to do some make some progress on Phoenix um, to get it ready, but yeah. <laughs> hey Brent from Texas. Um, what did I do off camera? So I did some work on the PTFE tube inlet and I designed a couple of options for holding the umbilical in place. So what color do you guys suggest the, for a V2 with golden frame? It's a good question. Um, so let's take a look at the filament inlet first. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but I modeled this up. And the idea is the filament is going in at a 45 degree angle and it's coming out the front here that you've seen. So the front looks like this. This is an earlier version with a different pattern on the back for a different thing that didn't work, but I found out it wouldn't work before I printed it. Found that out in CAD, so. Um, but yeah, this is coming in at a 45 degree angle. There's a little extra. All this um, hex pattern here is not usually there on these um, plates in the back, but I needed room to be able to put heat sets in the back. This isn't thick enough to do that. So I've located the heat sets um, behind these hexes. So this allows the you know, Capricorn here. Building a baby legacy as I watch you. Awesome. Hey, Alan. I am looking forward to seeing you guys too. You and the team and everybody. Hey, Brad, thanks for becoming a member. So this goes in here. Now, at this point, I've had to ream this out to make everything fit, but this goes in pretty well. Hey, Charles, haven't seen you in a while. I feel like you've emailed me and I didn't respond, so I apologize. And this is, it's still a tight fit, but this goes in here and we'll find out if the, if the uh, thin wall stuff will. That goes in there and then this is just to make sure that it doesn't move in and out. It just doesn't take much pressure. Just a little tiny, just a little tiny bit to hold it in place. 
Hey, Ant Star. Hey, Brad. Thanks for the gifted memberships. And PF Dennis, thanks for the gifted memberships. So, we'll grab a piece of good PTFE to put in here. I just wanted to demonstrate how this how this is supposed to work. And I like it. It prints actually on this surface on the build plate. So all the layer lines are around the, um, directly around the PTFE path. So that it should make the clamp strong. Now, on the inside, MacBoy Pro. Thank you for the gifted memberships. Will we have enough folks here for those? And will they continue to be given away as people show up? If anybody is, knows anybody who is interested in becoming a member, I'm curious if it will, if folks get here, say something in chat and instantly are granted a membership. Thank you. Um, now, if you do not get one from that, it is probably because your account is branded, uh, which is something that for some reason, branded accounts don't receive, or there might be a setting that you have to enable to, um, might be a setting that you have to enable in order to get that, to accept it. So once again, Thank you all gifted member, member gifters. Act for the big 50. Um, hey, Redacted. Chat is almost full of members. It should be. Hey, One-Eyed Willie. Dead Aim, Alan. So there, there are situations where either you don't have the setting turned on or uh, branded accounts. Um, oh, we'll give them to subscribers that are not online. That's cool. That would that is interesting. I wonder if there's any folks here that it's saying is being given but aren't actually here. Uh, we won't know. Hey, pathetic Puma. Hey, Maker Bites. Hey, Mike. I got the reminder to resub as I entered the video, then I got the gifted within two seconds. Nice. Shame I can't watch live too long. It's two o'clock. Yep. Thanks for being here a little bit, Maddie. Hey, Heiko. Just got one while offline. Yeah. Awesome. Thought there was a stream tonight. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things is for this. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Fabrico. Um, for this umbilical, for the tool head, the LDO, um, the Nighthawk cord here just happens to be the perfect size to tuck into the, the extrusion channel. Um, oh, well, we will find out. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Fabrico. I'm just going to say thank you, Fabrico. Um, so the, it tucks in. But in use, the tool head moving around, I don't want to, that could work its way out and I don't want that to happen. So we need some way to ensure that it can't fall out of the channel too far. So I, um, I designed a couple of options. I don't know which one is going to work better. Um, hexagons are best guns. Yep. Hey, R. Chapman. It's 1 a.m. here in France. Will it stay long? Thanks for when you're here. Um, I once gifted a membership when I was offline as well. That's good to hear. Um, I don't know when Nighthawks will be back in stock. I don't have any, any inside information on that. I see some folks that got it and that aren't online. Awesome. We do have 155 people in, online already. When I looked at it a second ago, it was 60. When that, when that happened, it was 60. Saw a hinged arm on printables for that. I've seen those. Um, I'm trying simple. I'm trying simple. Derek, thanks for the gifted memberships. 
Hey, Aaron. I'm waiting on Nighthawk. I think I got a sub. Awesome. Um, so I designed a couple of things. So this is the first one we're going to try because it's going to be the easiest one to uninstall it, uh, um, if I don't like it. So this is designed to tuck underneath behind it and go in like this. And it's supposed to be about, it should end up about centered on the grill back there, um, outside to outside. And, but what I don't like about this that I'm already seeing is that the, it is pushing the, um, the umbilical down and I don't want to actively push it down. So let me, I'm going to try to install this cause I want to see if my little, um, uh, features here to lock it into the extrusion slot work. But I don't know. I don't think I'm going to use it. I think I'm going to use this other one. Um, Agent Monroe, thanks for gifted memberships. Forward to the Nighthawk. Uh, Nighthawk 36. How do you check for a branded account? Search, search for YouTube branded account and you'll get a definition. You'll be able to tell. Um, did I lose a bit of connection there? I saw a, a uh, light on here. Um, I did put this on ultra low frequency or latency to see how tonight would be. More members, where are we? I gotta catch up. You get the sub. Hey, K2 Kevin, welcome. Hey, B McNichol, Bayes and Robert. I think you should test with the furthest away position to avoid catastrophe. Um, furthest away position. It's been constant here if you brought out the center hexagon that the ptfe comes out of to hold the cable and make it all one piece just an idea um that's a pretty darn good idea um i'm concerned with how it would impact the um the ability to install and uninstall it i would probably bring out one of these one of these small because it's pretty much right at the right spot, right, um, right there. That is a that is a good idea. I'm not ready for that tonight, though. So, what if you do, do, do any concerns about the Nighthawk cable breaking over time? Saw comments on Discord that made me wonder. Uh, just as an umbilical, I'm not concerned yet. Where would be the best place to mount a WaveShare camera on a Trident? On mine, um, even my Trident, I have it up here in the front. I don't know where's better. <laughs> hey, Steven. Um, where would the best place to mount a uh, WaveShare? Hey, Biney. PG7 connector on the hexagon next to the PTFE port. Um, I don't want to use PG7 connectors. That's the whole, the whole thing here is I'm not using any of that kind of stuff. Okay, the other option, and Chet is crazy and it's awesome. Uh, we do have, a, it is true, we have 180 people here. But we do have 152 new members. Um, just for a count. It does, it does tell me that. So, it's nuts. You need the handyman secret weapon. Duct tape. <laughs> you're gonna use a top hat no so what is the downside against pg7 it's it's an enclosed grommet you have to remove anything at the end of your wire to to push your your cable through it okay this is the other option it's super simple it just has a little tab that comes down and it just presses into the extrusion at the top so it's just going to go something like that and this piece and it did print like this so it's strong along those uh, that direction um, so it's strong along that direction so it should uh, not break and i think i'm just going to go with this one for the moment so let me see what i can do about 
centering this. So I think this, uh, yeah, I think centered is gonna be about right. And then press it into the top. And it's got a little bump in the in the piece that should be locking it in at least well enough. There's no there's no pressure um, pulling out on it. So and then it doesn't push down on the on the umbilical. But I do like the idea of extending these out on the back here. And I think that would probably be more than enough for it to work. So that is all that. Seem relatively centered. Yeah. Well, if there was one sided funnel in the shape of a PG7 that secures with zip ties, it could be. Option A looks better. Yeah. Oh, I was going to try this. Let's, let's try this. Let's see how this works. Let's just do it somewhere where we can see. So the idea here is you press this in. Now it, now it can move, right? It's, it's snapped in, but I should be able to take a couple of a couple of flatheads and I put some, um, these re relief slots here. So it would allow this center to flex and hopefully lock it into the, oh, that one's gonna be too long. I don't wanna drive it into the extrusion and make a, let's get the shorter ones, make a scratch in the frame. So that should. Yeah. It is, oh, wow. What is it focusing on? Come on. There you are. Yeah, it works a little bit. It's not loose in there, but it's not great. RS Mix, Rod, thank you for the gift of memberships. Um, it's not, it's definitely not, not ideal, but it was a first iteration. If I wanted to try something like that, I like this idea of creating the, um, the spot for it to flex into basically. I think with a little bit of refinement in the in the printed part, it would probably work. So, someone else on the team was playing with an idea like this um, recently. Come, on. was playing with an idea like this recently. And I, my expansion on it was these slots to either side. Ah. <laughs> okay, this will be good enough. So all 10 of those did come through, Rod, so that's good. Okay. Let's put, what am I, what am I missing? So we need to tension the belts. I need to, sorry about that. I need to cut the excess off still. I, I am um, not excited to do that. Why not just use hammerhead nuts? That is a great question, Tuxedo. And my whole mindset around not doing that for that particular project is I have my LED wires running along the bottom here. And I wanted something that I could attach in there with, and still have the LED um, wires going behind it. Those wires are actually tucked behind the umbilical here, up in the corners of the, um, of the extrusion for this um, umbilical going through. So since it worked out well there, I wanted to keep that that way. And, it, and you can't see them. So that's, it, it's because I got into the mindset. I wanted to mount on the bottom. I wanted the wires to stay there. I was looking for solutions that would allow both of those. 
but I think this has promise. It just needs a little tweaking. I did a 2.7 millimeter hole for the, for the screw and that could probably be smaller and might be able to make the, the compliant parts a little thinner. There are settings in there, one eye, in YouTube that will a, a flag on if you can accept if you if you have allowed, um, uh, you have to allow that option. Do some searches, you'll find something. Okay, we are going to tension belts and put panels on and do some input shaper testing. So let's power it up. I am going to use, for the first time, this guy. And this is the um, PF Makes, PF Makes, let me, I'm, I'm looking this up, making sure I have it right. Yes, PF makes belt or GT2 belt tension meter. So I bought this from West 3D when I was placing another order for something. And I had just seen these at one of the shows and I decided to just buy the pre-assembled one to try it out. And I never got around to trying it out. So now this is the great opportunity to do that. Let's look at, there is a GitHub for it. So let me get this link here. And this is linked off the, the product page at, um, there we go, off the product page at West 3D is how it got the link. I used mine for the first time the other day and it was so nice to use and know the tension. Good. The thing with Gift to Sub is if you somehow have something called a branded account. Yep. You'll never get a Gift to Sub. Um, what do you think of the shape tune from Clipane? I am hoping for that's what we're going to play with today as well, Baze, which I have not done yet. Um, I've found myself cycling through projects, and this is one of the reasons Tuesday exists, um, Tuesday streams exist, is I have not had a chance to get around to some of this stuff. So this is this is where we're at. I've built mine from scratch and it's a great reference tool. Um, there is a manual here and then there are printed files and stuff. And there's some information on how to use it. Here's a nice little um, animation. And then some more, more stuff here. So uh, assembly, is there anything here on exactly what a whole little assembly guide, calibration. So since I ordered the pre-built one, it's all um, it's all pre-done. Let me see if there's something in here. So there is some uh, guides for values for uh, the A and B motors and the Z. So yes, the question came up in chat if it's for um, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, is there anything else here? Some guidance on how much tension you can put on a, on a, a typical um, NEMA 17 motor shaft. And then some hardware. Oh, hardware vendor directory. I didn't, it doesn't look like that's actually there. And some credits from folks. Okay, um, I did. I do have the PDF version of the usage guide. So this is basically saying that you want to have at least 150 millimeters of belt clear where you're taking a measurement. You also want to have moved the gantry around in its full, um, full range of motion before every measurement. 
Not sure if the new GT3 belts are different or not. I've heard that they are, and it's going to be, you, I'm, I think I'm gonna tend, tend toward the higher end of the, um, of the tension. So on, these are, so recommended radial force at this point or at this point is the um, static tension. So we want to stay under, I would say we want to stay under 14, whatever the values are, we want to stay under 14 for the, for the lowest um, one here. If I'm reading this right, we want to stay probably under 14 newtons of force. So if we come up here, we're going to be probably under the 2.2 um, range. The AB is saying maximum tension is going to be in the 2.2 anyway. So same here, B belt is double the tension of the belt A on shake tune. So we're gonna go through and then see what our results end up being after we tune this. Now Z, we're, we're showing, uh, was there regular or is that all? Um, regulars, we're looking at our Z, we're looking probably around 2.5 to 2.8 on the Zs. On my 2.4 GT3 belt, I use the max values, works okay so far. The concern is stress on the the NEMA 17 uh, motor shaft. These are not uh, supported steppers. So the um, I don't want to use this because that's going to be a failure that you're not going to necessarily see right away. You may be able to, if you're, if it's really bad, you may be able to see things flexing, but that would be something that you're going to stress that shaft and it's going to break over time. Um, if you're talking about Z, yes, you're right. Z is supported. Um, I don't, I, I wasn't distinguishing, sorry, between what folks are talking about. I'm trying to. So yeah, you're, so we could on Z. I don't know what the, I honestly don't know what the impacts are on um, tension on Z as long as they're consistent and it's not loose. So what what the goal here for me is creating consistent tension on the on the belts. Now I took the back panel off for the thumbnail picture I had the back panel on. I I hadn't realized that I was going to be taking it off. Um, I took it off so I can get to the to the rear belt. Hey not. Now, on the Z belts, the supported length is here, right? This is going to be our, well, that's going to be our tightest section of belt because it's the shortest distance between uh, fixed points and the pulley. Where do we measure it for Z? Do we want to measure it on the inside or the outside belt of the belt? Does anybody know that? Because I'm actually... I, I could I could twist my brain in knots um, trying to figure out which one I think intuitively it should be. Is there any like set it sh I should measure it on this side or this side? I'm guessing this side, but I could. Uh, but if I thought about it for another two minutes, I'd probably change my mind. just made them even <laughs> exactly I both and compare inside 150 millimeters from the top um let's home it so let's home home all oh I need to cut those belts Gravity pulls on the inside, yep.
Yeah, you're right. I, 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 I read what you said. I knew what you meant. Okay, so that's homed. Let's, let's cut these belts. I really don't want to, but there's nowhere to tuck them out of the way. Um, that's, that is a, a thing on all of these. Let's get that in there. That is a thing on all of these uh, alternate um, tap setups. There isn't a, there isn't a anywhere to tuck the, um, the extra belt. So it kind of has to be short. Anywhere I, if I tried to tuck it in that gap, it, it can pinch it when it tries to activate. print for holding the extra There's, I mean the only thing I would do is maybe put it out here the problem is now you're effectively to some degree tying the back of the tap to the front of the tap so I think I'm just gonna say it may be a pain but I'm gonna cut this down to about the same length as the other side I had a Voron with a dual SKR 1.3 boards. Now I'm changing the big, big tree tech octopus. Any tips? No, just make sure you get stuff in the right, right port. Um, saw the flex tap today on my Trident finished setup of the firmware and I'll give it a go. Yeah, let me know what you think. Oh, can't go back now. Good look at this. So I make sure I cut it in the same spot. I am not ready, Garrett. I am not ready, but I know you've been waiting for this for a long time. If you're still around at giveaway time, I might put on the hat. Ah, with the Reesley G2E, are you going to reach your umbilical mount? It is on, it's already on my, on my discord. So in the files folder, it's already there. Hey, Russ. <laughs> um, your, your question, Reth. Yes. The plan is to install shake chicken tune, um, on stream here. Um, for anybody who, um, who isn't a member of the discord, there's a link in the description. Okay. Let me, that is homed. Let's QGL it. This kind of stuff is going to take a good bit of this stream. And I should have sped up the travel moves on the, on the QGL. Hey Aaron. I think with enough care, I can still maintain, uh, take this apart, put it back together with the short belts. It'll just be fiddly. Um, the config for this, I haven't posted. Um, hey, Keith. Keith, this weekend, the plan is to get back to Rook. I am going to print your display mount and we'll go from there. It's 510,000 asking too much. See you, Maddie. Um, in an hour and a half, we are giving away a roll of Polymaker filament, just like every Tuesday stream at 7 p.m. my time, 90 minutes from now. Nicest looking Bruce I've ever seen. <laughs> Modbot did a great video on auto backup to get. I'm sure it will save. Yeah. Let me bring up the printing all the cappy parts yesterday. I need to get busy printing. Um, I need to get busy printing the black box parts. We might have to do a 
a, um, a, st a single weekend stream in between Rook and Black Box. Is there a limit to Z speed with tap? Yeah, you get better accuracy when you go lower, slower. I just sell a three kilogram spool of gray filament. Um, dead aim. Printing G2 now. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to move this to the middle. Uh, uh, and I'm going to move this to the middle of the. What is that? X is 125. And Y is, I think, about 115. Okay, there was a question last week about, since we have to run this through, we want to run this through the, the, the um, travel, the question about where this ends up when we're at near max travel. So let me throw the, the top panel on here and just kind of get a visual. I'll get a better look here once we're there, but let's throw this to... Um, Z, I don't know what I set my, let's go 220 and see if that works. Nope, that's out of range. What is our max move out of range? I said, there we go. Thanks, Maker Bites. I gotta say this final result is really pleasing and tastefully its color scheme is awesome and so are the mugs. Thank you. So that is not necessarily the max um, possible travel, but it's, this glare is gonna make it really hard to see. So maybe I can just kind of visualize where this is gonna go. If we're up here and then we go to the back, um, to the back of the printer, G0, X0, Y220. And that ends up, that ends the, the umbilical kinds of, kind of folds forward. We'll see what the PTFE does, but the PTFE would do whatever on a V2 it would do. So I think the question was really, what is the umbilical gonna do? And it's soft enough, it just kind of flops around. Hey Liz, welcome. Um, G0X1. 250. That's just going to go over there. Now it does kind of sag over here. I wonder how much it's going to sag. So anyway, let's go back down there and then measure those Z belts. G zero X 125 Y 115 Z 20. I should have put an F, an F parameter in there for speed. Okay. So let's look at this. Ooh, I still get over. I still get that low. Thank you. Hey, Andre. Where was Steve's umbilical holder files at? And, oh, I... On the back here for G2, it's on my Discord. Oh, hey, Bill Brothers, welcome. Okay, so let's take this off. This is a little calibration piece. And the idea is you can put this in here and, um, and there, when it's there, it should read 1.9. And sometimes you have to kind of bounce it, I guess, or wiggle it to let it settle, and it's right at 1.9. That's in those instructions. So let's see where we're at. Let's just go about the middle of these and see what, what we end up with. Ooh, those are really tight. They're way over three. Um, that seems really weird. I'm going to try the other side, which might be hard for me to get to. 
that's about the same. So I'm getting about the same reading. That would indicate that they're way too tight right now, which I, that means that I run all of my V2s way too tight because this is about where I run them, just by feel. Hey, Sean. Um, let's loosen them up. Let's just loosen them all up, move it through, see what the values are. Just do do one. I know we're gonna for a final value. We're gonna need to um, run it through the motion, but I want to see what an approximate value looks like. This is 2.9. And I'm learning. I'm I'm learning this thing. This is the first time I've used this. How does the XY belts compare? I've got them all loose, very loose right now. So we're at 2.7. The belts I'm, no, on, on the, the Z belts are just GT2. Are just GT2. Now the instructions said for Z, we can go 2.5 to 2.8 and we're at 2.7 on that one. So let's do that all the way around. Keep it on there and loosen it if possible. I don't know if that works that way or not. Let's find out. What's it good? So that one says 2.8. If I get up in here and be able to get to the well, it does. That's 2.7. Now this is, oh, that's a little, it doesn't, it's not as, it's not quite. Yeah, that's high. Probably would need bearings to keep it on. Keep on thinking about it. Hey, Doom. What do you mean I'm not getting the right reading? 150 millimeters. Don't you have to measure the tension with a belt to pulley distance of 150 millimeters? <sighs> um. That's something that I, I wasn't able to get a clear answer on is should I be, if that's the case, then I should be measuring down here. I should move the gantry up and measure right here or move the gantry up to 150 millimeters here and measure the outside one. Like I said before, I don't know. I just simply don't know which is the correct spot to measure on these. I know on the X belts, it's pretty easy. You just measure in, in this spot. I would measure from the top as that is the most similar to the front idler. So right here or right here. That would be right. I... <laughs> I'm going to do the same measurement that I've just done on the others right now, getting these all the same. Then we are going to run through it, run it through its motion and see what the value comes up with. Because it seems too floppy. All of these. I, w I was very amazed just kind of playing with this a little bit before stream at what um how loose this has me getting keeping the belts that seems that that really seems seems floppy this is not gt3 so don't get confused with the, between the z belts and the ab belts the z belts are just gt2 
The inside belt is longer than the outside belt. Yep. Distance doesn't affect tension. It affects the frequency when doing the sound method. That belt tool is really nice. What hex length is that? Oh, <laughs> this is a long boy. Belt tension tool I purchased from West 3D. Correct way is you are measuring between the points and the tool. Okay. Use 150 millimeters from pulley. Wow. We're gonna check a couple of things. I guess I mean this even if we even if this is what we do on this stream and we and we do this and play with some hopefully some shaken tune and do a print next week, I think it's worth it. So uh deeply shows the procedures for Z belts. It doesn't actually show where though. It says how much tension. Well, okay, I, I could be wrong. Let's read there. Printer should be cold and motors on. Move your Z-axis through its entire range of motion to normalize the belt tension. Position your Z-axis so that enough belt is exposed to fit the tension meter with a bit of room on each side. But it doesn't say where. The tensioning process is the same as AB. Follow steps five through nine. It doesn't say where what what of the four sections of belt on the website are you talking about this measuring a b belts let's see Brent, no respect to anyone what you have too many armchair ideas to go with. Do I use it as a reference? They're all the same. You can do it anywhere on the belt, not like audio tuning. Try it. The, there, there may be a difference though. Because here, the, the, the tension isn't Shouldn't the tension of this part of the belt be higher than, yes, it is. Because the weight of your gantry is on it. So I may, if I measure down here, I'm gonna get a false, falsely loose rating. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that where I want it to be tight? Cause look how loose this is. And up here, it's significantly um, stiffer. And that's because the weight of the gantry is pulling on this side, pulling up from the, from the pulley down here. And this is where our slack is. Why can't I measure down there? I just move the gantry up and then I could measure down there. Pluck, measure and adjust, same as above. So if anything, this would be the spot that you don't measure. These should be about the same because you've got a, a, a rotating pulley up here that should keep, it shouldn't matter here or here. So really the question is, do I measure here or one of these two spots? And I was trying, I don't really see, unless I'm missing it, I don't really see where they say. Would the center of your build volume work? I usually center the gantry vertically and measure on the inside. The tool is controlling the length being, being measured. It, it, I mean, I think anywhere along here is fine. It doesn't really matter as long as you have, it says you need at least 150 millimeters of space. Um, 
anyone done this on stream or video? I don't know. Am I the first one? So not overload the motor. I usually put the Z in the middle so that both sides of the Z belt are about equivalent. You're overthinking it. Of course I am. I overthink everything. <laughs> You've got how many very successful warrants without using that tool? Go with your instinct. That's the... I... Oh, hey. Is this... Is this PF... Is this PF makes? We might get an a, 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 an answer. Include the weight of the gantry. Okay, so it's either of these sides. So I can measure it here or here, and I'll get the same as long as I have at least 150 millimeters of distance here. PF. This thing is cool. I'm overthinking it, but it's cool. Um, we need to move the gantry through because I've done a bunch of adjustments. So let me let me go over here and go to G0, Z2. I don't, I don't know what I set my max Z height. It might be 200. F. Oh, well, that's not nearly as fast as I was hoping it would be. You're in the hobby of overthinking and overbuilding. This is true. Okay, so then, and then we're gonna go. Oh, so I'm hitting firmware maximum speeds. I tried doubling the speed that time and the firmware maximum speed is keeping me from going any faster. It matters less on Z. AB always shoot for 150 millimeters length. It's the answer to his questions. I had the same, so I aired on the make everything equal and then ting from there. Anything worth doing is worth open doing. Belt tension typically measured in the center of the unsupported section. So I should go here. Oh, center of the unsupported section, which would be down here though. Um, and then let's move this back up. G, zero, Z, one, hundred. Just move this up here somewhere. I have 150 millimeters, pretty much anywhere I want to measure it. About. So... If I measure this right here, now I'm at 2.9. So should, so the uh, PF, should I measure it here or should I measure it here? If I measure it here, should be the same as here. I'm saying, yeah, that's 2.9. Okay, so right, right here, basically, I get the same value, which makes sense because it's it's looped over a pull a, a, a pulley. So glad you have this in the stream. Have as many questions as you do, but now we will know. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that. At least some of you have the same questions. That's right there. It's a little, it's a little under. Let's, let's wiggle it. Yeah, it's a little under tension on that one. I don't know if I should go at the max there at 2.8 was the max on the other. So maybe I'll go down on this one just a hair. You're not trying to wire my Milo but for the day. Don't touch a hot solder. <laughs> I think we would have just tried them both and see if it made a difference after all. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm gonna, I'm aiming for 2.8 on all of these because that's the max on the suggestion on the document. So I'm going to move that up a little bit. Maybe I can wiggle that. Do a final measurement here in a minute, but that's right at 2.8. So now I'm going to do the back side. This is like 2.85. So the tiniest little bit extra. There we go. Let's see if we can 
Max for Z belt specifically on NEMA 17s. Yep, that's right at 2.8 there. Cold go with the lower end at heat, it will be higher. I have tested that. TGL first is gantry level or does that not matter? We did gantry level. We gantry leveled before we started this and I would imagine that it matters. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, my, my normal settings aren't on this scale. It's way higher than this for Z. Um, that one's about 2.85 as well. Tune my XY belts to 2.5 on that meter. Never had to do Z belts before. Feels a lot, and and that feels more than that. Eh, I, I I couldn't actually say. That. Okay. Um. Do a quick read on one of your, oh yeah. Okay, let's go back up to, go through the motion. Are you giving the meter a slight wiggle to let it settle in? I am, I am. And it is settling in. It does seem to make a difference. And now we'll go around and check to see how consistent they are. That is right at 2.8. Drops a bit when you do. Yeah, it does. That is just a hair over 2.8. Like, Barely. Says that her best way to get the caliper to show the number she wants is to wiggle it until it does. That is so true. I just, her last two videos, she's actually said that, which is kind of funny. It's right there. Someone can clip this down or make a video tutorial on this pin. Is A, um, right at 2.8. Shut this down there all the way. A little above. And I'm moving like a 32nd of a turn um, as the difference in some of these. So one more test since I did made adjustments and then we'll move on to A and B. So go up. Down. It's okay. Gantry a line in between? I don't think so. It is nine millimeter belts on Z. That's the regular spec. That is. Just a tiny hair. When I tension my Z belts, I QGL after every round. It would, at, at the very least, that would take far too long. It's right there for the stream.
right on. And I'm gonna call this good if this one's on. shifting it. It is a little high. It was a little high last time too. Okay. self source parts, aiming for C belts, perfect. For the Z belts, I'm gonna call that good because just in the interest of time. I would probably move it up and down another time, go through, but then I don't know how that compares. It's a little looser than I would normally run my Z belts, but not significantly so. I haven't printed the parts yet to build it though. The print, I, I gotta say, the print quality on this, it's right there. It's basically perfect. Um, so I have no regrets buying this pre-assembled. Better have a separate shaft for the A and B motors. A uh, supported, is that what you mean? The reference materials say max 2.2 on XY, but I still go over that to hire Excel's an input shaper. Okay, let's home all. supported like the Z. I think in general, that's probably a good idea. When you need to go higher tension, then the steppers will support. There are folks who have broken the stepper shafts. However, through all, all my printers, I've never done that. Okay, and then what's our best way to kind of move through the, is there a, I can probably just do a diagonal, right? Um, Oh, and those are way, way loose. Um, this isn't gonna matter much. I'm gonna get a couple of things in the queue here. Okay, we are gonna get an initial value here because these are very um, loose right now. Agreed that print quality is awesome. No regrets here, better than I could have printed. I will build one, use it for my Micron. Purchase the springs and build my own. The um, folks were asking about calibration and this, with this across this, it should read 1.9 and this does. Okay, this is going to need to go back so I'm going to want to be probably at Y125, maybe one, I'm going to go Y150. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be enough space here. To... A little bit more. That's where I'm going to end up. Um, so let's tension our belts. Go a little bit each side. Until we're at some, some value that is equal on both sides. Hey Jeff. It's not critical. Well, I wanted space to work too. It, I actually went a bit more than 150 at this point. See? It's not 
I wasn't going for exactly 150. I was going for at least 150 and then space to work. So right there is already 2.3. A little under 2.3. And that just seems, well, I guess it doesn't seem super, but that just seems really loose. Um, and that one, oops. Let's see how I can get a, let's do this. Let's do this. Try to get this in here where it can be red. Um, that's 2.4. So, I don't know what these should be. Let's go for about 2.4 on both sides. That's already 2.5. So that's first round 2.4 at each, but we need to move it through its motion. Or the Phyzetic heat set press kit from AliExpress seems to be an okay tool. It uses rollers instead of a rail. A lot of people think the 150 is a requirement. Oh yeah. Um, one thing I did read in the instructions is the is that the steppers should be engaged. Um, when you're doing this, they should be locked. So let's go through there. And then zero, X, zero, Y, zero. And then there, nope. That's not where I wanted to go. There we go. Now we'll measure again. Two point four, right on. It's right on two point four. Okay. And our recommendation is 1.8 to 2.2, but 2.3 with ED, EPDM. What are the ED, EPDM? How does that compare to the GT3s? And if we're at belt tension, we're still underneath meter reading. We're at 2.4, which is 17.8 Newtons. Uh, 15.6, somewhere in there, depending on what the belts are like. EDPM or, yeah, EPDM or the high temp, but how does that compare to the, they're even stiffer. But if we look at our, this, we wanna be under about 14 Newtons. So this is probably, this is saying it's high. Going with the least common denominator on the two. This seems really loose. This seems really loose compared to what I normally run even. I don't run that, that loose. Okay, well, let's go with it. These are both 2.4. We're going to run the um, shake and tune. Belt yet, EDP, EPDM are stiffer and deflect less at given tension. But with this uh, PF, with this, would I expect in the long term to damage those steppers at this tension? 
because that's or, or at least the one with the the belt the the a drive with the belt higher on the pulley or on the shaft measure the hertz see what it reads i don't have a good way of measuring the hertz and i don't trust the the readings The documentation would indicate that I would be at risk of damaging those pulleys any tighter than this, or the steppers, any tighter than that. It's deciding it needs to focus on the camera, apparently. Okay. Um, Won't shake and tune show if there's a belt issue. Call Nero and ask him. <laughs> no, I don't believe they would be damaged, but at higher tension on the A stepper, you risk tilting an unsupported stepper in a stock plastic mount. Yeah. Let's see what Shake and Tune says. Right? So if we go here, let's go to the the Flipane Shake and Tune GitHub. Fricks. Shake and Tune will show if there's a difference between the belts, it does. A relative measurement between the belts, not absolute. Correct. Correct. Let's see how close we are. And let's see where this takes us. So if we go through here, there is a little instruction. This is part of the Clipane ecosystem. Um, it is a standalone module. Heat soak, the tension will increase 2.3 ticks on the meter. Really interesting. That means I'm going way high on some of my other printers then. So I tighten the belts on a $20,000 robot arm for the manufacturer. Which app do you use? iPhone. What's an iPhone app? Let's see. Let's see how this compares. If someone can give me a good iPhone app, I'll try it. In the meantime, let's go in here. So we're this is going to set up a bunch of macros, basically. Hey, Maker Viking. The Gates app. I most recently used the Gates Carbon Drive, and it worked better than Prusa and Guitar Tune. Okay, let me let me see if I can get that. Gates. Gates Carbon Drive. There it is. Um. Bicycle belt tension meter. Is that what it is? It's listed under bicycle belt tension meter. Tension meter is so much easier to read than gates. The tension meter. But use the motorcycle. Let's go to here and let's go to Gates Corporation. Um, ah, there we are. Bicycle belt. There is no motorcycle one. Bicycle belt. Oh, in the app, you choose motorcycle. Once it's downloaded, there's a motorcycle option. Um, why is that? Okay, well. Let's see if that works. Ah, 
Really? There we go. <laughs> Mistyped my password. LDO motor kit soon, motorcycle kit soon. Hey, Bitter Bucket. But I believe the Gates intended this app for simpler closed belt and two pulley systems, AB are coupled and there's a much more complex belt path. But we're just trying to get a value here, right? So if I open this, Gates carbon drive. Except we want the motorcycle. I don't want to see that again. Measure the belt frequency for tension adjustment and verification up to 500 hertz. Like that. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to let it access the microphone. Okay. Frequency. So where should I hold this? Just put it in the middle here. Getting in the mid 90s. Well, that one was 150, and that one's 105. See, this this kind of I I never get consistent results with these. I use a hex driver to pluck the belts. Yeah, and then I pull it in. Yeah, 24 to 125, I'm done. I don't know how to do that. Breath and I are in the same boat. We can't get those to work. I removed the cover and placed the, it's going, yeah, we're, we're moving on. I'm gonna just get frustrated with those apps because I've never gotten them to work well. Need a more scientific method than plucking it. Exactly. And nobody here is gonna have the exact same method and, and technique for doing that. Okay, we are going to get this installed. So let's get over to SSH. I think the tool is best used as a reference. It's a terrible reference if it's not consistent. <sighs> Sound thing is notoriously unreliable. Wait, he'll be able to use it then. Um. I, I do believe that the instructions for installing here are a little, um, a little lacking. Doesn't tell me where to start. Do I just start in my home? I use West 3D belt tool. I just bought the hardware kit and printed my own parts. It's amazing. We just got done using that. We were just trying to compare it, but if I can't get consistent results, I can't compare it. Ah, oh, okay. I think start in home and then run the WGET. That's kind of what I figured, but it would be nice for it to say that. So, home, just in case. And this. Password, installing the missing packages. Okay. West 3D is sold out. Let's 
still have a page open for that? No. Then add the include your printer config. Yep. Doing that. What do we have here? Here's the remaining items that will come with the second shipment. I shouldn't be reading. I shouldn't be reading, reading messages out loud. <laughs> ah, it's like 33 of the hardware kit on West 30. Nice. <laughs> How long is this process? We are going to add include shake tune configs to the printer config. So I'll just go down here and where am I going to put that? Let's put it down. Just like that. And I have not checked to see, I need to get the, um, an ADXL file. Shouldn't be too long soon. <laughs> hey Patrick. Oh, I don't think I have the ADXL defined in here. Um, still for an early tease. Yeah, so let's save and close that. Do I have, yep, here's an ADXL config. Now this is gonna need to change because we're not using our, uh, we're gonna use the one on the Nighthawk for tonight. Just serialized my second Trident today, awesome. One less version of hardware kit at West 3D. Perfect. Um, let me go over here to, the LDO Motors docs and get the config for the Nighthawk um, ADXL setup. Here at Voron and then Nighthawk's dual, tool board. And then I think hopefully down in here is Clipper. Clipper configuration can be found in Nighthawk here. So let's go here and the config file right in here should be hopefully ADXL stuff. Yep, here it is. I think that's all I need. Let's see. Let's just grab all of this. We'll tweak it. And go over here to this. This is all. Here, let's just paste this in here. Um, oops. So. Uh, that is not listed as, what did we list it as? This isn't important. Resonance tester. That means that this isn't important. Get rid of that. And this is important. But this guy up there is not. Neither is that. I think that's all we need is that stuff right there. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. The AliExpress tension meters are basically just stripped down in expensive digital calipers. Okay. Um, but what did I name the the Nighthawk? Let's save, close, and it do I have a separate config for it? I think it's in here. It's at the top. So I called this TH. So I called the, the tool head TH. If I come back over here, and this is gonna be TH right here. That should work. You want the probe points in the middle of the bed. This 
yes. Um, you're right, and I and and I I, I do yes, I, I agree. Um, my thought here was in the middle of the print area, which is wrong. Um, so let's put it right there. Yeah. Hey, Lutian. Um, just ADXL. That should all work right there, right? Did I miss anything? to change all the names. Okay, let's restart. And then home call. We still have in HK and part of the resonance tester, do I? Oh, I do. Thank you. I'll have to fix that. I know find and replace is a thing. I'm good at manual processes. <laughs> do that again. Two hundred and thirty-six watching. We have thirty-three minutes to give away. We need to get to two hundred likes, and we're at one hundred and twenty-seven. What is? I never remember. I never remember. So, what is the? Or is there a um, macro for that accelerometer query? I like could documentation and measuring resonance. Oh, did I screw something up by interrupting it? Did this interrupt it? It shouldn't have, right? I am getting errors. What is this? Ignored the following versions that require a different Python version. Is this okay? Do we know if this is okay? I didn't interrupt it. I don't think this was. I am on an old distro. Thank you, Nuno. That's what I was going to check because I can never remember if it's abbreviated or the full spelled out. Will not work with Shaketune. Oh no. Okay, so, um, can I update the distro? Do a, what is this, APT update full or whatever it is? Can I do that and expect to be successful? What was the command? Pseudo apt full upgrade. Can I do that and expect this to work within 31 minutes? Oh, it's apt distro update. Would this work as well? apt update to update your system package list. Oh, there it is, distro upgrade. Is it distro upgrade? Pseudo APT dis distro upgrade. Not sure. The question is, would I actually end up with, would we end up spending the rest of the, rest of the stream troubleshooting Pi stuff?
I feel like I feel like I want to do it because I really want to use Shake Tune. I don't want to deal with the regular stuff. This is this is the point. It was not long for my update. The distro update shouldn't be a big risk. Be quicker to back up and just reflash. You know me, or maybe you don't, but most people here know me. <laughs> uh, and AT, okay, so then, so pseudo APT upgrade, uh, update. Now upgrade, now that, um, that won't update the distro, will it? Who flashed it when you were messing with the pie last time? No. <laughs> Is this gonna do the the distro as well? Standard upgrade won't update distro, right? So now upgrade the packages and then do the distro upgrade. APT distro upgrade. Okay. I do want to do it the fun way. So the other night, was it last night even? I got the, um, hold on, APT dist dash upgrade. Oops. Is that right? It's not stubborn, just adamant. <laughs> Tuner just, um, APT upgrade and dist upgrade are the same. Does this do the same thing? Oh, let's find out. Let's just hit the button. Let's take the the commands from folks in chat and just run them. Yeah, it was the same. Um, what is the what is the command I use? Or how do I check what distro I'm on? But nothing that starts with RM or a fork pump. I remember seeing that command when I was researching this before. OS release. So here's where we're at. We are on Buster. Is this where we want to be? <laughs> Thank you, Rath. Update, upgrade, Raspberry Pi OS versions. So we're Buster, then there's Bullseye, and then there's Bookworm. Bullseye or bookworm. So if we go to, we did that, and then we need to reboot. Oops. Oops. Let's reboot. Now we're going to break it. Yep. That's okay. using crow's nest. No, I don't think so. Not intentionally, unless it's a default. Oh, you keep looking at, oh, because Discord's not in streamer mode. I, I actually really don't like it when, um, when I watch a video that's like that. So I apologize. I'm I'm turning streamer mode on. What are we doing for those who might not be the sharpest tools in the shed? We're upgrading the OS. We're going from Windows 10 to 11.
trying to upgrade from Buster to Bullseye? Well, I've got some, some instructions here. So let's go and I'll give a little bit. Here, let me paste the instructions I'm using. <laughs> where no streamer has gone before. I think he's using one, but anyone using a pie cam, there's a known issue with crow's nest on bookworm. I was gonna go to bullseye. I wasn't gonna go all the way to bookworm. Um, and someone did make a good suggestion. Let's just go in here and select all of this and create an archive and download that to my folder. Okay. Shake team repo just say list like three Python free libraries and a couple of other things that really need the whole distro upgrade. I don't know. If you're new to this editor, you can find, you'll see more links like this. So that's Buster. And replace the current Debian code name with the one you want to install. So this one. So is that gonna be Oops. That. And then probably our pie. If you back up the whole printer data folder, it saves all your settings for main cell fluid and your printer history, etc. Does that look correct? This is like camp for crow's nest. There's a fix for it. We're coming soon. There are several lines change all of them the same way. Bookworm security, there's only the one. And random pies and it works fine. The directions I use looks the same as the one you're following. Save and exit. The repo, repo to Raspbian. That looks, oh, should I, is it, it do I just change, change this to bullseye then? Yeah, I, I see that. Let's just do this. <laughs> that? There's a little bullseye and keep from Raspberry Pi repos. Yep. Okay. It's seeing stuff, so it's getting to the right, right spot. YouTube support chat speaking. <laughs> You have an updated source list. What is that? Um, um, yeah, that's what I just that's what I just updated. Um, dot D. I don't know what the dot D is. Hey Eric, long time no talk. We need to. It is it is getting riding weather. We we should. Familiar with team coding, but never group coding. <laughs> Holding my breath. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think we just do upgrade now, right? D is the directory. 
Is there anything I need to do with that? Or do I YOLO? I hit enter. <laughs> I am in Yolo County. So, I mean, I am in Yolo County, California. take I'm starting to pull on reboot yeah, yeah we're gonna we're gonna do it we're gonna do it will this work actually are we going to to be using shake and tune tonight start the poll are we going to be using Shake and Tune tonight? We will want. Yeah, I, I figured, Rath. I figured. Did you happen to drive by the sinkhole? I, I did not know there was a sinkhole on five. I am using a very old Pi install, so. This will explode all your bits, are you sure? <laughs> it's backed up his config, so worst case, he has to throw a new image on the SD card. Don't forget the APT dist upgrade before re. Okay. Hey, Johnny Boy Tech. Don't forget the APT dist upgrade. What does that actually do once we've done this? What does dist dash upgrade do? Gotta upgrade the apps. Used to do cabinet work every bathroom had a sinkhole. Um, well, need the Mission Impossible theme song playing. We need that, and we uploads um, uh, 3D sets of van he's building, driving around. Create all the software loaded to the newest version for that released. Okay. Hi, Wayne. APT dist up dash upgrade. It's worth doing. That makes sense. It's interesting where the files are coming from. The updating and it's also in the doc you're following. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I'll, um, I'll actually look at the next steps. Yep, it is. I'll do everything automatically. Recommend running this other command to install the latest version of everything. Not mandatory, but it's generally recommended for a major upgrade like that to make sure all dependencies are up to date and linked correctly to the latest version. It's the same process, confirm, and then reboot. Okay. <laughs> so what did you folks think of the Milo build? I really liked the um, stream with the uh, Jake and Nine Mile on it. Did that go pretty well from your point of views? Points of view? Oh, I get ahead of myself all the time. And then I wonder why it doesn't work, and then I go back and realize, oh, there's another step there. includes removing dependency packages that are no longer necessary for resolving conflict. 
up to the Milo Builder, really I'm tempted to do one. You're using a mirror right next to you. It's a mirror. Minutes till giveaway time. Are we on? Have we hit over 200 likes? No, we have not hit 200 likes. A mix of interview and build. I hadn't done one of those in a little while, huh? I liked having um, project folks on at the end of those. I'm just manually updating the necessary dependencies. Is that not possible in this situation? It might be, Brian. I'm not familiar enough with this. And I kind of wanted to update the OS on this anyway. Um, that was that was on my mind. Um, and I probably should have done it before stream. I had planned on doing, uh, figuring out how to do it and run it, but I never did. No, we had Vez on. Um, Daniel and I had Vez on the, um, on the VZBot stream. Do you really want to show lubricating the carriages and some nice improvements along the way? My little concern is how difficult it is going from Fusion 360 to the cam output. The Fusion 360 cam is a steep learning curve, but I feel like it's one of those that once you kind of get it, um, you it's it's not too bad to go through the different settings. I prefer the 3DP stuff. The Milo build is going to enable more of the 3DP stuff. And it's nice to mix it up a bit. For a while watching you build Milo's, maybe you want to finally build it. I hope this doesn't take too long. The RC build. I love that RC. That thing is, I really, I kind of, I really am tempted to build a second one. Um, cause it's such a good, um, example of like complex 3d printed projects as conversation plate pieces that like work and stuff. It's a bit monotonous. Which one? There's Berry Pi firmware update as well. All things get harder it is. Does the Phoenix have enough volume to build a house for ants? Sure. Does this? Oh, it's still going. Okay. Is there a document? Do I need to worry about the firmware on the Pi? Currently working on building printing the 3D sets buggy. Mm -hmm. mm, tap, that would be a good open source design to have. The Milo build was just a whole bunch of tightening screws. <laughs> it was. RPI upgrade. Everyone else just have a black screen. Is it, I saw some things on the, on the connection, but um, it still says excellent for me. Stream health. Yeah, it says it's healthy. Yeah, it says it's healthy. If it's an old install. And what was that? Someone said RPI upgrade. Okay. Let this finish. Sent a link in stream chat on Discord that goes over Pi firmware update and other cleanup commands. Discord. See, I don't get the notifications anymore. Upgrade directions. Oh, that's what I was just at, right? RPI update. Couple of, couple of links here. String finder, okay. It's RPI update. That's still going. Oh, is it getting close? What is this? Yeah, 
APT full upgrade. RPI update. We did the, oh, we need to do the disk upgrade still and then, okay. So where, what is this doing? My printer's today, that was not fun with flashing all the controllers. Unstable, merchant, I don't know what this is doing. So it's just kind of looks stuck here. Just hit Q. Oh, it's a change log. Oh, okay. That was not obvious. That was not obvious. Thank you for getting me past that. So it's done downloading, now it's installing. Okay. <clears throat> I had to, for the Tridex, I had to, I ended up reflashing Catapult. It had CAN boot on it. I switched it over to Catapult. Um, I had some weird problems with that. And well, weird problems of trying to update it before I did that. See a PF, thank you for your help earlier. And thank you for a cool little nifty gadget tool to play with. Um, I had problems flashing it. I ended up coming back to it the next day and just did a core update of Catapult. And then the Clipper update happened. And then I went through and updated both tool head boards and now I'm in a, in a state where it'll home. Uh, something had broken the config before, um, so it wouldn't even home. I actually crashed the tool head at one point, uh, but there is an updated config setup out there that I copied and it is working again. So, configuring, there are services installed in your system which need to be restarted when certain libraries such as WoodPam may cause interruption of service for the system. You will normally be prompted on each upgrade for the list. You can choose this option to avoid being prompted. Instead, all necessary restarts will be done for you automatically so you can avoid being asked questions on each library upgrade. Without asking? Should I do this without asking? Should I do this without asking or with asking? Is this, is this a yellow moment? Should we go yellow? I'll hit yes anyway. <laughs> Don't ask, just do. <laughs> this is something that I really do wish. Default action is keep your current version. Uh, modified to you since installation. Would you like to do about it? Your options, so um, default is in. Keep your current version. I think I'm going to keep the current version. I did hit the update button. We have five minutes till giveaway time. Are we getting a bunch of are we getting dislikes or are we getting likes? We have 11 likes to go. I'm going to be interested to play around with this gauge and belt tensions and print quality. Because as you've seen, most of my builds, I go by feel, what feels right, I print, it looks good, I leave it. Um, but having something where I can look at what value I hit and recording that and changing something and then seeing how that affects the prints, I think will be interesting. If it won't break, it should go to bookworm? No. So I'm only going this one step here um, just to 
get to um, just a bullseye to be sure that we have all the compatibility there for Shake and Tune. Give away a two hour mark. So Simon, all of the Tuesday streams are at the two hour mark because they are always shorter streams. Um, and we did hit 200 likes, so thank you everyone. Um, Tuesday streams are usually about two to two and a half hours. We'll go the full two and a half hours today um, because if this is successful, I do want to um, try at least get a, an initial value for Shake and Tune. Um, and we'll go another stream next Tuesday. We'll do the final stream on this, um, doing some additional tuning and testing in a, in a print. Might be something you can add to your test station belt tension. This is a long process though. <laughs> we have four minutes. Give away a roll of polymaker filament. That'll be good. This will hopefully be done by the time. I mean, it'll take about three more seconds for this to finish, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what we're gonna do. We're, we're at, we have three more minutes till the giveaway. Let it keep going. We're, we're, we're not gonna pause the giveaway until this is done. We'll, we'll do that and hopefully this is finishing up about then. Like I said, it'll be about three more seconds before that's done. Ooh, we got a bunch of new Discord members from the mentioning earlier. <laughs> Didn't notice I really caught your Tuesday streams live. Yeah. It, the idea is these should be shorter streams. It is a work night. It is something that if I keep these to about that time, I can still get something else done. Um, is it a Pi 3 or 4? I'm pretty sure it's a Pi 3. I'm pretty sure it's a Pi 3. Wait until the three second countdown to fill the form, leaving on the edge here. <laughs> um, the one thing that I really dislike about Discord streaming mode is it changes the way that names show up in there. So, um, like it'll do like the first letter and then dot, dot, dot of, of users. can't tell who I can't tell sometimes who posted something unless I, I recognize their avatar BT Pi Pi 2 and CB2 released the um, Phoenix here has a Pi 2 on it and it worked fine I've got it all set up I got can um, it's all the can stuff is working Okay, we are one minute away from the giveaway, so let's move over to let's move over to here. Our red printer deserves a Pi Five. <laughs> it has a Kraken in it. It has the Pi Two, and it has two of the SB um, twenty two oh nines on the tool heads. So, and the nice thing about the Kraken is there are two can out port out. Um, uh, ports on it. So I just have one of those going to each tool head and then I have the tool heads terminated and then I'm done. Uh, we are at seven o'clock. So it is Polymaker Filament giveaway time. We have a lot of responses in there for the number of people. That's, we, we're usually more, but not by a lot. Um, we might get some Polar Ted Club members today. Put them cracking in my K3. Nice. Uh, so we are going to close the um, filament giveaway form when I haven't had a new response in three seconds. So three, two, one, closed. 
one day, one day, uh, three, I got your, at Earth, it's a Pi 4, it's the one I got you in Maryland, Earth, it's a Pi 4, this is not, is the Kraken 2 Ports 1 CAN bus, three, Two, three, two, three, two, one, half, quarter, no, nope. three, two, here, let's see if this thing's done. It's not done. Um, oh, there's another one. So three, two, one, no, oh, three. You, you, you just barely got in there, Kevin. Three, two, one, done. Okay, let's blink this out. <laughs> oh, John got the first one. Two ports on a single can bus. I didn't, two ports on a single can bus. I didn't think. Clipper supporter, multiple can. It's on. It's on the same can bus. It's just two output ports. I think it just makes it easier to wire. Uh, you just got in there. Um, <laughs> you just got in there, Demlar. Demlar was the last. <laughs> the last entry. Stronger nerves to wait. We'll have more raffle entries for long-term CA members. So I don't, um, I think there are rules around that, um, that I want to avoid. There should not be in, uh, a monetary incentive. I don't think there's something about that. And since this is worldwide, um, I, I don't want to risk that. Oh, I'm in the, I'm in the results. It doesn't paste into the results. There we go. So we're just going to scroll down here to the bottom. Let's see, Demlar. <laughs> um, let's get a number between, um, Let's go number between three and seven. Two point four. <laughs> what are we doing? Seventy three percent. Three and seven. Trident. Okay, three. <laughs> One, two, three, and spin. Who do we got? Polymaker filament winner is. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, that is perfect. Congratulations, Demlar. Um, <laughs> um, I am going to make you do it. You need to DM me in Discord the number you put. <laughs> I am going to make you do that. <laughs> I'm actually crying. It's, uh, that's hilarious. He said re-roll. <laughs> he, he did respond. The more random something is, the more you get weird results from time to time. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to re-roll it. Demlar is saying to re-roll it, but that is, that is freaking great. <sighs> Good job, Demlar. <laughs> Um, okay. We are going to go, um, um, if you can respond quickly, what's the next range, Delmar? Delmar, what's the next range? <laughs> what's the range we're gonna, we're gonna shuffle the next one? Or give me a number. <laughs> we are going to re-roll this. Delmar, if you qualify, I'm, I'm sure you qualify, and you let me know. Um, 10 to 20. We want 10 to 20. <laughs> 10 to 20. We are going to re-roll this. If, if you change your mind, let me know. <laughs> I'm going to go 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If it's if it's Demlar again, who's our winner? Too much filling there at the moment. Corey, Corey, are you here? Congratulations on your name coming up on the roll. Oh, I I don't know. Um, Polymaker Partners don't qualify, and I, I and as soon as I said that, I realized that he's not. Um, but I don't know if affiliations with resellers counts is kind of where I was going. Um, I have no idea. Corey, are you here? Oh, there you are. I see you. I see you waving. Congratulations. Um, doo -doo -doo. Corey, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, you get a coupon to the US or Canada store. Um, actually copy that. If you are outside the US and Canada, you will get... I keep hitting control C when I try to go to the next, okay. Um, then you'll get a form that gives you a, a list of filament to pick from. Congratulations, Corey. You will hear from me um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> the Demlar Club for grace, gracious refusals. There we go. Ah, where are we? 95%. Good. <laughs> that was perfect all right here and here and more filament than i can ever use yeah same here well the problem is is that i keep wanting to use different filaments for every project so, yes, no, what? Oh, let's get rid of the... Unpin that. Great giveaway segment. Is it asking for a response there? Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, that's my bad. Um, something's modified. Oh, I wanna, I wanna keep that. Thank you. I, I did not catch that. Tuning filament at the filaments at the moment as well. Do a cursed filament stream a la Zach. I have some cursed filament. It's um, HDPE. Uh, what is this new version? I don't know what that is. It's a configuration file available, but the version installed currently has been locally modified. Why is this asking me for a different way? This would be so much nicer if every one of those questions was like this. Because I can see that it's asking for something. Keep the local version currently installed. 
Why didn't all of them come up that way? Where it only, only, only three quarters of you think this is gonna be successful. That is some black HDPE. The, the, what's really cursed is it's not a consistent diameter. I actually got some um, somewhat successful prints and then it jammed up in the hot end because it was like 2.2 millimeters at one point. Um, TPU. Um, now we are going to do the dist upgrade command. Or do I do the update pseudo apt update again? Or just dist upgrade? I think just dist upgrade. I missed last Tuesday. Is that when you set up the sensorless homing? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. This is just saying it's going to do a bunch of stuff and it's going to free up some space. TPU sucks for printing very small parts. Yeah. The, the TPU tires on the Sakura on the 240 are very slick. I took it out in the and uh, it, if I got on it too quickly, it would spin out, but I could get it going. It's actually not quite as fast as I, as I expected it would be. Um, I was expecting it to be a little faster, but it might be better if it actually had traction. There's sale on Sunlu filament today on Amazon here in France. I want to try some TPU carbon fiber or glass fiber for tires. Interesting. It wasn't really good for drifting because as soon as it would let go, it had too much weight in the back and would um, just spin around. It was very hard to get a drift going. The neighborhood kids weren't out there when I ran it. I've been showing it off at work though driving it up and down the cubicle wall, uh, uh, hallways. <laughs> Did you ever sell the Subaru and get the Maverick? No. Um, still planning on selling the Subaru. Um, I just have to get time to clean it up and get everything listed and, um, and find a buyer. What kind of work do I do? I manage an IT service and support group for state government. Drifting, you need a gyro for sure. I was looking, the radio I bought doesn't have a, and none of the receivers have a, um, have a, a built-in gyro. I don't know if you can run a, a independent gyro. I don't have nerf battles with the kids. Uh, and mine would probably be a bit much. <laughs> When, when my, my son was a, a kid, yes, we did um, some battles, but. So hopefully this is successful. We are going to, tonight's goal will be to run through, um, hopefully shake and tune and get a, an initial value. Um, and then we'll do some actually playing with those values next week. The radio link radios are not too much money and come with a gyro. I bought this really nice radio master. Um, so I'm going to use it. Why are you selling the Subaru? Because it's, um, there's a couple of reasons. One of them I won't go to go into on, um, stream. Um, because at a certain age of cars in California, then certain things have to happen. Um, but it's also, I'm not doing anything with it. And I am having so much fun doing what I'm doing right now that I would be, I, I just want to get something that 
is kind of an all-around vehicle for me. And that's what a Maverick would be or something similar. Whatever is out when I'm actually looking. Sparta is doing a sell by five carbon fiber school spools get one more carbon fiber. I ordered parts for four slabs for my nephew, niece, and family, and then I fired mine into a cereal box. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get up early tomorrow. See you, pathetic Puma. Cybertruck Beast Edition. No. No desire. I also don't want to spend... I, I want to spend, like, Maverick money on a car. I don't want to spend... Tesla money or even Ford or <laughs> or Toyota freaking expensive okay is this another question here we go so quit So that was just downloading. Now it's fixing them. Now it's installing them all. I have a 2001 Nissan Frontier that I'm going to go back to driving here soon. I remembered because Rocky Mountain Subaru capital of the U.S. We don't want to buy a Tesla even putting aside they are built like there's a lot of people I know that have them and really love them but I hope this doesn't take as long as the last thing I ran the disc upgrade so this is what I'm supposed to be running right the only Maverick I can think of is a Ford well the I'm sorry a 150 an f-150 or any of those are are big and expensive. Yeah. My my wife and I don't have, I mean, I, I have an STI. It was for when I bought it, it was um, at the edge of what I wanted to spend on a car. Um, but she's gonna, she's in a Mazda 3. Um, and she loves it. We're going to replace it with something equivalent and give the Mazda to my son and then I'll go back to driving the truck. And I'm not 3D printing. I'm usually out working on a 04 STI drivetrain swapped 04 Subaru Forester project. Nice. I didn't especially care for the Maverick. It stuck with the F-150. When I look, if I go, if I end up in a Maverick, um, it will not be a CVT, which means it won't be a hybrid. I'd be looking at the, the EcoBoost um, version. But I'm hoping to stick in my truck for long enough for the next gen to come out. Because uh, I, I heard there's a redesign coming on the Maverick this coming model year, um, or a refresh at least. Maybe not a big gen change, but a refresh. Um, and then give a little more time for some of the other manufacturers to enter the segment. You can boast is the only one I was interested in as well. Yeah. I don't mind. I like smaller vehicles. Um, my Frontier is really about as big as I'd want to go on a truck, although I was considering the, the new Tacoma Hybrid that's supposed to be available here pretty soon, but it gets to expensive. Hyundai Santa Cruz is similar to the Maverick. That bed is terrible though, and it gets, doesn't get great gas mileage. I really want something with good gas mileage. So I'm, I'm kind of putting vaguely, I'm putting my, my goal. It's something that gets around 30 in a truck without being big. 
and there are no small trucks. I know you can get some big ones that have like um, variable um, displacement technologies where they cruise on four cylinders, but drive around or, or, or um, when you need it, uh, all eight cylinders kick in um, type stuff, but. I don't want a big truck. Remember when Tacomas and Rangers were small trucks? Yeah. My Nissan is from that era. About, about 2004 is when they got big. Cops for a few more years. Old school Toyota, but nothing that small anymore. Hey, Sean. Have a good night. I wasn't expecting the the little cleanup pass to take as long as the, the upgrade pass. There's a 2.7 EcoBoost and I can get 27 if I don't go 8590. Yeah. Part is I only have 150,000 miles on it. My 2001 Frontier I think is right at 200,000. Just over 200,000. I bought it 12 years ago with 140,000. <laughs> it, but it gets about 17 miles per gallon. Felt something there. Does that need tightened? Nope. Thought it felt it shift. The problem with the prior to the current or the upcoming hybrid Tacoma is they're they're all in that less than 20 miles per gallon range. But I get like 12 in my STI. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> 84, almost done. An 89 Toyota truck with a four cylinder. to make a small truck with a volt drivetrain. <laughs> 12 gallons to the mile, not quite that bad, but I, I, yeah, it's, it's really poor gas mileage. That's a combination of my short commute and um, my short commute and uh, the particular car and its stuff. Um, Nighthawk, just a tool head version of the Pico Bilical. I mean, similar. It's a RP2040 based MCU, just a little smaller package. The, um, the Pico Bilical has a few extra outputs. I think it has extra NeoPixel stuff, that kind of thing. See you, Projects. Good talking to you the other day. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Projects in Dad's Garage does a, um, is, is doing a podcast, uh, so it sounds like I'm going to be episode two. So. Nighthawk 36 should be coming soon. We don't have Euro level Petro costs, but California has some of the highest, yeah. Fortunately, I don't have to buy Petro. Um, Okay. So that is done. And now um, I think this is the last command. This is the firmware update, right? Yep. Backing up firmware.
Uh, they had a little different order here. They had us doing that in this instructions before the... Um... Let's go YOLO. Um, these instructions had to do it before the, uh, the other upgrade. Um, and then I guess the auto remove. Be like, okay, it's doing, it's doing its upgrade. Hopefully this was interesting to folks. Not quite what I was expecting, but I don't, I've not gone through this process on stream ever before. I've not gone through this whole process at all. Usually I'm setting up something fresh, but now that I've been doing this a little longer, it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna use what I've learned here to update some other printers. especially if I want to get them to at least bullseye for the, make sure all the packages are correct for the shake and tune stuff. I made it worth it. Made the, made the stream. <laughs> Usually do this kind of process while they eat dinner, start it, come back 30 minutes later. Yeah. Mike's kind of crackling intermittently. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I am kind of shifting a little more than I do usually. I don't know if I caused something. beard noise. Does that change? It muted, crackled a bit, muted a bit after. It's not telling me it's low. I heard up a little guide on how to update everything for all the people out there. there. I don't hear it. The problem with the, any of these guides, it's so, it's so hard because there's so many combinations of setups and in writing a guide is, I mean, even LDO was redoing the Nighthawk guide and going through and finding um, what every scenario, like what if someone is still on Buster? It's different than if they're already a, a, a front or a more recent um, install. Yeah, choose your own adventure book, exactly. Oh, that's right, I am downloading and... Oh, here we are, okay. So, and then should I run this pseudo APT auto remove thing? Help me, go be one can help me, you're my only hope. <laughs> With the Kraken having the two CAN ports, would it be better in CU for dueling zero, in your opinion? Um, not necessarily. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of controller for a V0 based um, printer. Okay, There's one more command after this. And then we'll reboot. I'm following this guide. And this one looks like it's at least going somewhat quick. And hopefully it's not removing these Python 3 things that I need.
now you won't be able to unsee that. Unsee what? So am I the only one that thinks, help me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why did that not copy? And that. Okay. Now we're rebooting. And here's where we're going to find out is 73% of you <clears throat> are right. Time to pray. Or be done with the stream. <laughs> long it's going to take to come back but we'll do that insert explosion sound does it work the way it doesn't have to be serialized connections our pi update before the reboot we did our pi update we did our pi update that was one of the Okay, we are in. Let's reconnect. Get the bad gateway stuff. Let this finish loading. Oh, come on. Get up there. Let's finish doing its thing, hopefully. Are we getting permissions issues now? This could be a permissions issue. What would have changed? Services not starting, possibly. Moonraker is running. How do I check that? What is the, what is the thing I go to? It's colon what? Ah, 7125. Is that right? Can't run there. The pseudo known host thing. What's that? Our pie update is not really needed while doing a stable upgrade. Just don't get why people are recommending it. Well, we were just doing a. Uh, I think just a firmware um, reinstall. Yeah. No. Okay. What was this? Oh, <sighs> what was that saying? Active. No host is for trusted keys for SSH. What is our IP address here? Fifty dot one seventy one. Clipper has left the building. That's not going to come up. Oh, add printer. Well, that's weird. Okay. Um, that's what we want. Reboot and invent something needs another go. Yeah, I, I agree. Let's um, uh, firmware is pushed through the official release channels when it's unstable using our pipe that pulled the latest firmware from GitHub. Moonraker has died. I, there was that script that we ran 
in the Moonraker folder to relink all the things that needed to be done. I wonder if that would help. Well, not, we're not ready yet, Nerq. We may not get to it this this day. We may not get to it this day. Um, Doing. So it is not starting up. This looks fine. Yeah, we've got the we got this stuff wrong and it's just probably not coming up. Hey, Doom Paint. Unless you specify a specific commit, you run the risk of getting unstable firmware. I mean, that would be the problem right now, but it's certainly best practice not to use that. The gen I, I, I get that. The general instructions out here at three different sites that were linked to me all have that same thing. Um, no Moonraker connection. Okay, this is not coming up. See a tuxedo? I don't think it's what it, it, that is pr great advice. I, I, I agree, DB. I didn't realize that that was the case, and it's interesting the instructions don't. Um, <laughs> ref, the um, you had an error, CP cannot stat during the RP update, no touch file or directory. During the update, I had an error. Okay. Um, can I, I mean, I mean, I think the main cell needed to be relinked or something as you stated. Restarting the service didn't do it. The the screen here is flashing at a at a login screen. Take a look at your Moonraker logs. Should be in printer data logs. And what is what is it? Cat. And what is the, what is the, what should I use to view this? Is it really more? I remember that from DOS. I, um, And then there. Manager, database, Python. More or less. Okay, require system. Module lib camera unavailable, import failed. Does that matter? Look for dependency failures. Module lib camera unavailable. No things, no warnings. Clippy host not connected. 
JSON RPC request error. System control status moving record to config it. Should still work, just no webcam. JSON RPC request error. Is this just going through the same thing? Yeah. Uh, I guess, I don't know. Um, use nano, start at the bottom of the log file. What is tail? What is tail? Python environment error. Looks like the Python thing because you updated Python with the distro update. So is this something I can, can I redo Python? Tail reads to the end of the file. Oops, is that two dashes? I couldn't see it. Install Moonraker and it should regen the environment. Last 50 lines. Python 3. You have a virtual install of Python, so it may need recreated. The virtual will not automatically update with the system. Reinstall menu record should fix everything. Two dashes for version. That's what I thought. I, I didn't trust my eyes. We go here and go install and evolve. Moonraker install. Configuration requirements. This, add that. Installing Moonraker. So we should be able to run this guy here, right? Yeah. I saw those Python things come up in the, in the cleanup. I do that. YOLO. Was what the dependency that we needed for Shake Tune. I don't remember, Brian. Hey, Buddha. Oh, why cannot initiate to that connection? Why? Failed to get to the bullseye. Some index files failed to download. Current thread. Unable to get the local encoding. No module encodings. Anybody have any? Oh, needs at least Python 3.8 and Buster does not have this.
Oh, I've got um actually here. We are on bullseye. We are on bullseye. Um you did see this here. It is looking for oh do we want to do a do we want to do a where was that hit one is trying to get to buster then bullseye the archive oh, okay this is why I made those electronics te electronic test patches so can I is would it be any good to just do another um, APT up, update and upgrade Because I, I have a feeling that what that cleanup process. I'm not going to use Kio. Kio. I, I refuse. If I can't fix this, figure out how to fix this, then so we'll be able to figure out how to fix it. And it might not be on stream. Maybe do an install of Python rather than a virtual install. What does that mean? What does that mean? Because this didn't seem to do anything. Clipper East Coast system runs in a side install of Python. If the system changes underneath, it can get very confused. Clipper and Moonraker use a virtual environment. So is there any reason not to, I mean, is, let's see, installation, installing, Orson overwrite of Moonraker's system script. script not like I don't do this all day at work what am I missing oh you you were never mind I think you mean build it into the package install scroll and make sure those clippy args are in your init D what args am I looking for what arguments I, yeah, I, 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 I saw. I was afraid that I was, I was ignoring some advice or something. On the Moonraker install instructions. Oh, not what I wanted. I 
logs are sucked in from printer data system control. What is this? Installs Moonrakers speed up Python packages in the Python environment. Did you push up to Bullseye or Bookworm when you did the distro upgrade? Bullseye. We did Bullseye. Is there anything in here that I can use to kind of reset? Yeah. I realize how much easier it is when I have the air logs to copy and paste. Yeah, I know that I know this can get frustrating for some of you. I what is this? I mean, this is a good. Yeah, that's just bullseye. There's all that's there. Feeling your pain though? Okay. Well, I'm sure some folks are. <laughs> I'm sure, but more in sources.d what's that oh what is that that was not what i wanted um it's a directory It doesn't have Python 3 installed or fate. So, I've given up on Bullseye. So many headaches with Wi Fi. I'm on Bookworm now and it's been plain. I would reinstall Moonraker and C. Isn't that what we tried to do with this install script? Or should I force an overwrite? I put a Reddit link on the Discord stream that may be helpful. Okay. Let's see. The reinstall aired out. What happens? Here, let's do this. Let's do another YOLO moment. Actually, let's go here. Let's go. Let's copy this. Dash. Oops. Dash F. Is that right? You try to force override. I'm not sure who built it. Did you update Moonraker beforehand? Oh, yeah, everything was up to date on this. Everything was up to date. Um, did that do something? See ya. See ya, Admiral. Install Python module or wrong Python version. Um, and there was a. There's an uninstall script too. same thing um there's an uninstall system service is it listed in here command shell speed ups policy kit privilege 
recovering a broken repo. The following commands may be do, used to restore. We have restarted. You don't have a locale. If I do just rebuild, force this, these instructions here. See you, Zach. I don't have any of this for my builds. A little chance of handling this. So Moonraker sets up a virtual Python environment, right? And that's, in that case, they go, go hand in hand. Let's just try this. This isn't going to hurt. Well, that didn't actually remove it. That didn't, isn't, wasn't that supposed to remove Moonraker? Why is this still here? Did I type it wrong? Oh yeah, I typed it wrong apparently. There we go. Um, you said Moonraker environment as well. Do I need to? my vote typing a couple letters and didn't tap i know i'm yeah is this is this good so far yeah it's still running mm -hmm. i do remember that brian i'm just i i i'm yeah I get on a roll typing and I just want to finish it. <laughs> yeah, this is looking good so far. We're at least getting something else done. <laughs> See you, John. I wonder if just removing the ENV file was getting rid of the, the stuff in there and recreating it. So I'm pretty sure at some point through here, if I was doing this on my own, 
I would have gone to, because I've done this with mainsail and stuff, I would have gone through and looked for the remove and reinstall option for Moonraker. If I was sitting down just working on this. But this is really good information for the next one I have to do because I know I have other Buster installs out there. Air person requirements for PIP, no such file or directory. Is that, oh, it's looking for a metadata thing. I don't know which of these are come up normally. I would have formatted and reinstalled the OS. I'm too, I'm too, what someone didn't say, it said not stubborn, but something else for that. Adamant? <laughs> this guy. And it is restarting Moonraker. So, obstinate, persistent. <laughs> so, the, we're not out of the woods because something's not right. Um,. Clippy not connected. See a clippy error. Do we see a clippy error over here? Restart clipper. So this is restart. Yes. Yeah. Do other services have clip similar in these setups? Should I just reboot? An issue with my SD card and one of my... Hey, Jared. Welcome. Oh, it was still alive. Did a fresh install a... a reflash. Install a catapult. May need to click a reinstall under Moonraker instructions. Let's do that. We're going to do it right here. These, these same instructions. Clipper EMV directory. What is in there? Why? Oh, Clippy. to stop the clipper service. <laughs> I don't know if that'll actually... Other plans for that weekend. Oh yeah, Rocky Mountain. Um, and now I think these RM-RF fixes everything. getting chilly out here this is a three hour tuesday stream which is a little long but if we can end up with a working environment then we'll be set for testing stuff next week
Thanks, Reth. I'll do that. I'm just turning around to turn on my little heater in the garage. Need to call it a night. See you, don't knock it. Okay. we want You'll need to on install Clipper. They left out a step. You know what? I know there is a install installation and manual setup and Clipper. Ah. This guy, all this stuff is what was left out. But we did this. We want to probably go here since we're here and it's easy. Let's stop the service. Go here. And the other stuff. Okay, did that work? And then this part. G2SA will be a bit still working on getting G2Z, G2Z XL. You just removed Clipper's running environment, you need to put it back, yeah. Yep, that makes sense. I was expecting the, oh, we were, we removed. Is that what we? Add to restore and for Clipper, maybe used to restore Moonraker. So we just, but this was just a remove portion of it. I got it. Um, sorry, we got to the. Oops. There we go. Oh. That should be good. Start. That's a, that's a negatory. Get something different. They're unknown now. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Did I miss any steps just kind of going through? You will need to create the file structure for Clipper and Moonraker, but that all should be there. Should I restart? Should I do another reboot? What is the Clipper status? What is that command again? Tune you with a total fresh install, got it to work, but it broke again. What was that um, clipper status? Oh, thank you. Okay, apparently I'm typing into something else. Boom, or. Okay, it's not letting me. Not letting me do any typing there. 
My window is. Oh, connection reset. What does this say on here? Dismounting file system read only. EX, EXT4 FS Air device something. Detected aborted journ something. I'm just gonna power it off and power it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Powering on. Let's see what happens. Coming up. Okay. Reconnect. Oh. Clippy not connected. Oh, what? Okay, so we can go back here now. And get back in. And then... Active and running. But this says, this would indicate it's happy, right? Can we get to this thing? Yeah, this comes up now. Your device is authorized to access the API. So let's, yeah, you're, let's see what the. Chirp Clipper service. Isn't that what we checked here in the, here? This is the Clipper service. And it says it's active and running. Sim link for the printer. How would I set that up again? Yeah, let me, oh, where is it? Uh, system, Clippy log, let's open it. Oh. Clippy log exists of this. Starting Clippy. That's the entirety of the Clipper log. Oh, Clipper config. That's weird. Shouldn't it say printer config? Printer data config, yeah. Where is that being set? Not in any of this. Um, what was that? Does anybody remember where we found that command that fixed all of that? There's a script in Moonraker that fixes all of that, that repoints all the stuff. Um, where was that? <laughs> Arm <Our> Dash <Dutch RF. laughs> 
No, there is a script. That is the arguments it should be getting from printer data. Data, data path fix in the Moonraker scripts. <laughs> See a ref. I don't know what you mean there, Yo Ben. Yeah, I, I need more information. Clippy UDS address. I'm not familiar enough with this to know what you're saying. There. But I know last time we had all these problems, it all got resolved when we were able to relink all of that with that repair script, that data path script. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's Jared just sent it to me. Um, yeah, I thought it was more complicated than that. Um, dot slash scripts slash data dash path dash fix. Let's see if this works. You guys are troopers for hanging out with me. How many do we have still? Apparently 162 people. <laughs> We've lost 100 people through all this. <laughs> That's fine. Ooh, this is doing lots. When it does lots, I get, I get excited. I couldn't push you down the path and not stick around. <laughs> Okay, I don't think there was anything else for us to do there, but just try to reconnect. Just watching and trying to learn. Second secret giveaway. So we're still not seeing, we're still not seeing stuff. I'll close this other clippy log. Do we got have any new info here? Oh, it's still trying to do the same thing. Looks like the guides for the no new info. Went to go to bed about two hours ago. Currently working on my so is this normal to see this? Inside moonrecord.conf and sure address is correct for there isn't there isn't one anymore in that. It it doesn't need to be defined in there. If we look at Moonraker comp, it's not here. Um <laughs> Reboot. In the main cell manual said that there was more stuff about setting up the Clipper service. Did it have to be done again? When we did this last time, there wasn't any, um, there wasn't anything we had to do once we ran that script. It just worked. So there's something else going on. Let's see what this does. I'm just rebooting because I'm in IT and restarting is the default. Yeah, it's not, not starting right. It's still not starting. All this stuff is working, but it's not. So the, that was the Clippy log. 
close this again. See, this is this is clippy, and it's not it's not seeing things. Not even a clippy log in the logs folder. It has to do with the clipper environment config when it's run from other automated installs. I think the arguments were defined are defined differently. Oh, it hasn't. You're right. Um, I like what is. Let's get back in here. think that exists yeah that doesn't exist okay why Ben in moonraker conf put this line under your port number under server clippy uds address what is that what is that and what is that going to do? I'm back for a bit, my other support cases headed over. <laughs> what is that going to do, Yo Ben? Under server. This is the line under port. This is how you click link. But that's not in, so I'm, I'm, that's not in another working fluid clipper setup I have. All three of my Vorans have that line. I don't have a port. Oh, port. It's port 7125 for server. Under port, it says Clippy UDS address. So right now, Clipper service is running. Moonraker is running. But there's no... Yeah, and I, I, I don't mind trying what Wyo is talking about. I want to try... Um, nothing. Remember, I deleted my Moonraker config file and reinstalled it with the default, and it just worked. Well, that I I'm pretty sure. Um, <sighs> See, you, Donald. I know you stuck around for a long time. Appreciate it. I'm gonna try this because this isn't gonna hurt. Let's go. Flippy under UDS. Find where that was. Is this what you're talking about? I can always remove this. But is this what you're talking about? Okay. Let's see what happens. What all of mine have? None of mine have that. Um, actually, let me, let me take that back. Let me 
just check a mainsail one. Um, yeah, I, I do. I take it back. Doom, thanks for the gift of memberships. My mainsail one has it. My my um, fluid one did not. Printer data comms clippy dot suck. That did not appear to work. But I think it's more fundamental than that. I put a copy in my printer. JSON RPC request error. Requested method, printer info, message not found. It has to exist for Clipper service to run. Okay. Um, let me see. So. Printer data, system D, system D is there. And Moonraker environment is there, but Clipper environment is not. So, is it Clippy? No, Clipper. that oh well that was in the in the other docs well why did that do that It's all one line. Ah. I'm deleting all this. So the main sale docs had this. It should be this. This is not what we did. We didn't act, I didn't actually continue the document this is all that stuff, right? Printer data. Oh, this is the Clipper service. The printer data is this one. Okay, fill in this line. Oh, and that's exactly what you just did. Okay, okay, I get it. I was in the wrong one. So this is correct. It is one line. So let's write this. And this other file, we want to make sure it exists too. So clipper.service. Yeah, I, let's copy that. And let's make sure that this one exists. And it doesn't. So let's grab all of this. This is probably where all the, see once again, I didn't finish. All this was correct, but this stuff down here is not. The nano truncate what line? Oh, the, the last one? Let's see, how do I go to the end? What's the, I went to Clippy Sock. Oh, it did. Or maybe it's not in the one that I copied. 
Uh, no, Clippy Sock was the last thing. I don't remember doing any of this on other other installs. I'm impatient. Clipper service files goes in. Didn't that, isn't that what we did? Oh, did I, did I screw that up too? I might have screwed that up too. <laughs> Did I screw up where that file is, though? I think I probably did. Um, See, so yeah, I did. I did the Clipper.service in systemd system. D system. Um, Clipper.service. Where was that supposed to be? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. I did copy and paste it. But it's still not working. Ah. Pseudo system ETL status dash dash no dash pager dash dash full clipper. Need to enable it. I need to enable it. Save the path. So you do that. Next step, you have to create Clipper environment file in your printer data. Oh, Clipper service. Enable Clipper service. This is end of stream. I'm doing a very poor job of following directions. After your config is in place, restart Clipper with. to distract you but you're running fluid and that page there says main sale is that important not for this not for this oh we got more input here that same command before give us a whole lot more info now so what's going on now Clippy pie, printer data are we getting let's see if we're getting a log file let's close that oops Log. Couldn't download, no file. Do we need to reinstall Fluid now? So it's pointing to the right stuff? 
Is that the next, the next part is fluids not? So we got Moonraker, then Clipper, and maybe we, the wrong order on that, but do we need to do fluid now? Because this is not pointing to the, the right file. Blue is just a front end. So now. Wow, I'm just. Remove the line ID you put in your record config. I will when it reboots. Three and a half hours. We're gonna have to call up here pretty soon. <laughs> Good night, Cliff. Oh, now we're back to bad, bad gateway. Oh, there we are. Um, get rid of this. I don't have that on my. Nice to know what is wrong here. It'd be nice if I was a little more familiar with this. That is good to hear, sir guy. Did I get a clippy log? Oh, I nope, couldn't download. No file. There's no file. Um, well, we might have one in here, right? Where do those get stored? Clipper logs. It's in the other files tab. Oh, I was trying to go here, but if this isn't working, then well, let's look. Printer data. Now it's finally showing printer data. So two minutes ago. Starting Clippy. What else should I be looking for here? I should be looking for here. Micro log. And this thing's, oh, yeah, this thing's ridiculously long. March 27th. This JSON RPC request error keeps coming up. Do we know what that is? How are we doing? Oh, we actually gained a few people. <laughs> JSON RPC request error. Was the firmware flashed updated on the main board? 
Yeah, that everything was was functioning before I decided to, well, before we needed to, because I wanted to use um, Shaken Tune, but it requires at least um, the newer version, the newer OS. So we updated the OS and that's when all this happened. Remote process call. Helper. Oh, here's another. What is that? It. Three twenty-six at eighteen thirty-four. It's still this Clipper config crap. What's the? What's, uh, is it the end of the file? Oops. Control end. Yeah. Request method printer info. Compi build error. I heard the shaking tune. What's the name of the GitHub repo? We haven't gotten there yet. Really. Issue 206 on GitHub in Discord. Unable to load Clipper, Moonraker log showing JSON error. It's not a board needs reflashed, just now. It's not. Thus, Moonraker is not able to connect. I see in your Clipper log that it attempted to build the C helper. My guess it did not build correctly. You can take a long time on the Pi Zero if it's interrupted to likely corrupt the file. Is, do we, how can we tell if that's the same thing or if it's something different? the OS to Debian bullseye, which included a lot of package. Here, let me let me get this page over here so we can look at this together. Um, here it says the file the file is too short. Oh, boy, it's a clipper issue at this point. Um, the OP's problem is not an issue with Moonraker. So I'm 100% with you. I thought it was clear from my statement. Moonraker works fine. By uninstalling, reinstalling in the Clippy environment. This is not the version that is in Clipper requirement, but works for me. I'll resolve the issue to my suggestions above. I mean, I guess I can try the suggestions above, huh? I don't think there's anything here that's gonna hurt. I'm just gonna delete it and restart Clipper. So let's try ArcSign suggestion first. Um, I never remember that system control command. I need to get it ingrained in my head. Um, Yes, yes. Then okay, so we need to give it plenty of time to build that. And I I was click happy, so let's restart the service and let it sit here for a minute. I hit up 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 up. Until it pops up, pops right up. I don't know how long I should wait on this. Oh, it, it's doing something because it wouldn't let me type in. So this did this before. No, you don't use service anymore, Patrick. It's system control, system CTL or whatever. Okay. Disconnected me. Let's give this a minute.
Oh, uh, oh, I see what you're saying, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> Cycle through my previous commands. I don't know how long I should wait on this. Just let me back in. No, it's still working. It's doing something. So I don't really want to interrupt it. Hi, Linus. If it's taking this long to do this, the screen is up. So. It doesn't say anything weird on the screen. Make sure you give it plenty of time to build before shutting down or attempting a restart clipper again. Well, maybe I, maybe I didn't let it before attempting to restart and I did attempt. Show off the car again. It's at work. I left it at work so I could show it off at work. I don't have it here. I'd love to show it off. I love the thing. Connection timed out. Oh. I don't know what, we're not getting anything here. <laughs> We are not getting anything. Did I kill it? Did I really kill it this time by deleting that file? Yeah, it can't get it can't get there. Too much YOLO. It happens. That's that's the risk you take, right? I don't know that the screen is responding. I still see a image on it. Um, it just shows the command prompt uh, login. Oh, are we getting some something? One too many yellows, but a hard reboot will help. It's a file that should get regenerated. Yeah, that's why I've been kind of, I don't know how long it takes to regenerate, but I did, I did um, restart the service fairly when I thought would be appropriate, but I'm going to yellow one more time. As soon as this comes up. Hopefully it comes up. Okay. Okay, we want to... Nope, that's not what we want. It didn't save the last command. Um, should get a refund. I want to go here. To go to CD Clipper. And 
chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.chrome.
where was the oh other fires fires this is at yep that was just now was it moonraker log yeah Let's look at it um Yeah, all these late night stream well a way longer stream than i would want to do no kiao i'm gonna make that a banned word in the thing i have nothing against it overall i just don't want to use it yeah this was at the bottom um looking to see if it came up anywhere else Rockstat, throttle checking. We're just getting these. If you're in, I'm reinstalling delete your Moonraker config file and let it create its own. It's more fun and cleaner to install it all manually. Exactly. Okay, it's still giving us the same error. No issues with the 9 p.m. stream. Let's go through this again. Love, I do this stuff all day at work when I come. Yes, I don't get me wrong. Oh, and I'll say this again. I honestly have no problems with Kia. It is super helpful for a lot of a lot of folks. Um, the um, I just like doing the manual way. I just like going. I like going through this process because I am going to remember some of this. A couple of things, maybe. Okay, is there anything else I should remove? Um, said we should go in and remove the... Um, my zip file. I have a copy of that, so let's just... backup of your printer config but for, I did I did I did I do have a backup um I am in yep okay so let's put it back in Lord, get pace and tap out. Yeah, it is so late for so many of you. A oh, GitHub issue with the JSON air. Oh, yeah, we were we were looking at that, Adam Ross. Um, if this doesn't work, then I'll go back to that first command that ArcSign suggested um, in that in that post in that GitHub issue. I don't know that I gave it adequate time before I messed, started clicking and getting impatient. That's almost bedtime. Gotta get this working right. The latest Moonraker config will have that clippy UDS address line. Really? Okay. It's a new thing. We'll find out.
I had that in there at certain points when other things were definitely not done right. So I couldn't say that that putting that back in there wouldn't fix this, but. This is interesting seeing how some of this is um, interlinked with the environments and, and stuff. So is there an order of operations that needs to be followed in this? I think, honestly, if we went here and did the clipper docks for installation, prepping an OS image, building, flashing the microcontroller. Oh, so, oh, install Octopi. So we'd probably be going to, let's go, let's just go main cell because it's it's already up here and we would go manual setup and what are we with clipper with all this stuff then moonraker with a oh and yep here's that uds address in there and then um and then main sale Okay, and then going to set policy kit rules. And system, system CTL. I don't know why, why I have a hard time remembering that when it's simply Mainsail, I, 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 yeah, I get it, Phil. It, it, Mainsail just had, I had the documents up and I knew that they had good instructions for manually installing Moonraker and, and Clipper. And um, I could have gone to the Fluid docs, but it would have been the same stuff. There isn't anything different in the Moonraker install, um, the commands that are there. This did not work. At a, I don't know if it's, I mean, I, I, I got it. I got it either. Pseudo reboot. No, it, it started looking in printer data when we got at, at, a, at an earlier step. I haven't seen clipper config. Um, in a while. I mean, I know it's still not working because the, the screen, here's something that it does. The screen does that and it's done that the whole time. Ignore extra in when they appear. <laughs> Go over Moonraker log is new and we're still getting the um... Oh shoot, where'd that go? Still getting this, not as many of them. To reinstall Clipper screen. Does the sock file exist? Oh, here. Um, oh, yeah, it's creating Unix domain socket at moonraker.sock. File list. 
says it created it. Um, oh, it did not. So let's see. Gonna bail. See ya, Bill. Thanks for being around for so long. I'm catching up with you. I haven't done another bookworm update on the printer. Puppy log has data. Oh. What in the world is that? Python null. Starting clippy. Is there anything necessarily here? Yeah, this is all printer data, at least now. It did not create a moonraker.com file. Here, let's go. Fluid dots. Welcome to Fluid. It should show the full config. Yeah. And it's not. Let's go um, installation, manual installation. And. Oh, this is this part. Um, see this is moonraker comp here we are so example configuration which should apply to most users can usually be found here and this is see this is this is a problem this is old documentation because now they're relying on Kiao to do everything hey Liz <laughs> Is my, my struggles being broadcast? However, doesn't um, Moonraker docs have a default configuration? Is there an example tile? I don't want all this. Did you already uninstall Clipper once? Wondering if the service files were left behind on the system side. We removed the environment folders. Hey, Alex. Where was it that I saw the other? Here it is. I'm grabbing this, and copying this. Let's close this, and I do not have a Moonraker, so let's add that file Moonraker comp save. Then down here, get rid of the update main sale. Subscriptions. Um, here, I've got another. I've got another subscriptions. What would be subscriptions? Is that a required announcements? Is that a, yeah, I don't, that's not required. Um, I think the rest of it should be generic. Here we go. Fluid. And save and restart. Ah. <sighs> And we're just not, we're just not getting anywhere on this. This is a clicker service running. Will it show with a top command? What is top? What top is? Hmm. 
<laughs> Refresh the right tab and see where Moon when Moonraker was updated. I what do you I don't know what your top is a process viewer. Top shows all the running services in table view. The log files tab, check the updated log from Moonraker up to the new computer. Easier to run system control status quicker than the look through top. Okay. Moonraker log was just updated. Let's look at it. And it is still giving us the error. I'm gonna do one more thing and then I've gotta call it. I'm I'm fried. I am fried. So I'm gonna run this one more time because this is something that wouldn't have. Yeah. I got to run this. My new rain box etch spring steel. What is it? System. Oh, really? That's weird. Oh, yeah, sorry. I am, like I said, I'm getting fried. Thank you. I have to suggest SCP comp and do check status. How do I check status? What do you check that the Moonraker comp parameter is a valid path to Clippy socket, the one after the A flag in Clippy's command line? It's locked up again, so it's doing something. I did install policy kit. It was part of the Moonraker reinstall. <laughs> Kenneth, I, I'm, I'm about there just wiping the thing, not wiping the whole thing, but clearing it all and just reinstalling from Clipper to Moonraker to, well, I want fluid on here. That's the problem, is I don't want to wipe fluid. But I should be able to do wipe, clipper, and... My path is missing. Adam, I can you, can you explain it to me like I've been streaming for four hours and my brain is completely fried? We did reinstall clipper, but we did it in the wrong order. So starting all the way over, wouldn't be a bad idea. There's a way to back up the database to burn all you want to preserve. Make a break and approach it with fresh mind. Yeah. 
boxes. We'll just go in now. Yeah, at this point, it at this point, what happens is it's off the network and I have to power cycle it. I don't know if it's still working. I could leave it here for a while. Adam, you said it looks like your path is missing the dash A. Which home printer docs comms clippy sock? And where where was that missing? Where did you see that missing? Where did you see that missing? And what does the dash A do? Check that the Moonraker config parameters server Clippy UDS is a valid path to Clippy socket. I think Steve shows. I think it shows in system steel. Yeah, this is this is down. The stuff you've been doing, I'm back up and running again. You didn't miss steps and skip other things and screw up the order. <laughs> Probably. Which I know I have done. What does the dash A do though? I think it shows in oh. It's been a wonderful stream, CR Chapman. I'm I I I still have seventy one percent people seventy one percent of people saying that yes, this is gonna work. The printing press, thank you. Okay, I want to find out where was this dash A supposed to be. I go here and we've got a new new moonraker log. Dash A I guess points to a UDS. The Clippy sock was in the Moonraker config file, which is here. And should this, this Clippy sock, and then the question was, does that file even exist? Clippy Moonraker.sock. There's no clippy.sock. Is there a clippy sock in other? Mm. Oops. Hold on. I'm checking another printer. I do not on my on my other working um moon or fluid printer i don't have a a clippy dot sock in that folder i do not well isn't there always a missing sock you only end up with one. Great. 
personification of perseverance. <laughs> I need to find out what creates it. That shows the issue. What's the issue? Cannot load library. Oh, well, it's not able to load that C helper file. <laughs> Period bucket. Thanks for the gift of memberships. That C helper file is the one that we were trying to recreate. Is there any chance? Is there any chance? Oops. Is there any chance that I can grab that from another print from another printer? Under the clipper.service line, check for the path for Clippy. Under the clipper. I think at this point, a reinstall of Clipper should get you back up and running. But I've, but I've done that. And that's what broke me last time, Jared, is doing Clipper after others. Under clipper.service line, check for path for Clippy.sock. Under the line where? Oh, here. This one? But what what are we what are we looking for here? Fully true, the change of the sock file with Moonrick was likely the issue there, but Clipper was already broken again by the time you got to that. I don't know how to get to the end of this line. I'm in a view thing that I, I don't know how to. Oh, shoot. I don't know how to get there. Oh, I guess. Oh, there it is. Clippy.sock. I think you need to remove the Clipper service file. That clippy.serial, is that even there? Oh, it's clippy.serial. Dash A is there. The one that handles system control service calls. You said I need to remove the Clipper service file. I don't know what, <clears throat> which one is that? It's in printer data and doesn't exist there. So that's one of the problems. So how do we make clippy.sock exist? Clipper's gonna make a Linux sysadmin out of you. No kidding, no kidding. Um, the clipper was already broken again by the time you got to it. The clipper's in the scripts folder. I mean, I, I, I'm going to try what you're saying there, Jared, but... Is this going to hurt? It's not the, it's not the right color. You only remove the folder before you left the service files and the service is calling the wrong things now with the updated clipper. I posted a link to a Reddit post. I think I've read this before. I 
You see, and you know, it's still inside. Yeah, so that's not gonna work, right? Look at Clipper EMV. Can I, I should just remove this. Is this what you were talking about, the dash A? It's there. Can you try oh, just running this? How do I how do I run this? How do I run this? Oh, we're running this, okay. Find dash name. Serial is not there in the Reddit post, but the Reddit post doesn't tell me something to do. The default name of the pie if you have renamed it. I did not. So from uninstall Clipper with the uninstall script and reinstall it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is the last thing, <clears throat> last thing I'm going to try because I'm about to go to sleep. Let's, let's, how do I run that uninstall script? Where, where was it? Is it in Clipper? Scripts. Clipper uninstall. Like that. command is typically used to remove local files. Oh, sorry. One of 
telling you to remove the local files now, yeah. Is there anything in there that I care about? No, because I think printer data is still okay. Where am I? Where did printer data go? Material, fluid, oh, printer data. It's at the end there, wow. Okay. Clipper. Get clone. Should he do the prereqs just in case? Yeah, let me let me clone this and before I do the install all. Where are the prereqs listed? Oh, these. Bullseye. Oh, these. I mean, I'm not, I mean, it's not gonna hurt to do it, right? <clears throat> if something in there is missing, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was fine. Um, someone wanted me to do the... Is there anything I need to do in here? LS temp, who is that? Sergey, is there anything you wanted to see in there? I thought the sock might be there. Ah. So we're going to, am I doing this right? Just making sure we're gonna install the virtual environment. Did that do that right? Find command doesn't output path to file, then the file doesn't exist. It's that simple. And I think what the hope is, is that redoing this, it, it creates the file, right? So all of these should exist. Is there anything in here that I should have to do? 
Do I want to touch? <laughs> what is touch? Clipper is supposed to create the sockets and Windraker can they connect to it. What is touch? Touch just creates a blank file. I see. Will this have changed? Well, we'll find out. Make sure all this looks good. Okay, so that shouldn't have changed. Yeah, we did this last time. Update the timestamp on the file or create the empty file. Sense. Interesting. It wasn't removed. We didn't rem. Oh, in the in the script. Yeah. This one's there. Well, this is. That's there. What's going on? Um, so that's that. And then enable and start the service. What was the red message in the thing? I think that was, uh, oh, file home is, is unwritable. Oh, that's a good. Why is that unwritable? Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't do pseudo, but we were just looking at it anyway. Yeah. Yep. We were just looking at it anyway to see, and it's there and it has the things in it. And if we go here now, if this was working, yeah, um, we should be able to go and we don't have clippy.sock still. Oh yeah, that's interesting. It's missing there. Um, you haven't started a Clipper service or enabled it. So do I just do the system start now? Okay. Clippy saw it gets created when Clipper is started. Enable it then started. Okay. That's not there. Um it's not started yet. Okay. I don't know when it should appear. Apparently you're trying to tell me. Apparently I'm not. Still not there. It's still not there. Which makes me think this isn't going to work. It's not creating that. It doesn't exist on my other one either. Oh, shit. Wait. It's working. Um, 
clipper screen. Why aren't you working? Can you try to find new and clippy sock to validate first? Um, yes, yes, um, let me, what was that? Did I type that recently? There we go. Is that what I want? Um, find name Clippy Sock. Yes, it exists. <laughs> it should not have worked. And Jared said you had to reinstall Clipper Screen. Yeah, I figured I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'll fix Clipper Screen. I'm not gonna do that here. Where is it? Where's what? All screwy for Clipper Screen. You need to do the troubleshooting steps in the Clipper Screen. I will probably just remove it and reinstall it. Uh, we can't see it. We can't see what. Oh. Sorry. Um, okay, you're you're absolutely right. Give me a minute. We have to do. Um, have to do this, and it is there. Um, no, it's it's there now. Um, We, you're, you're, you folks are absolutely right. We need to, we need to see if this installs without errors. Right here, copy. Here. We determined that doesn't work in most cases last time around. Okay, are you ready? I think that's what we did. No errors. No errors. This printer is cursed. This printer is cursed. I don't know if we'd call it a curse because we've actually fixed it every time, but this is the one printer that we, um, Missing pip. What is that? Oh, I didn't see an error. Well, there was no red. Oh, no module named pip. What does that mean? Install Python pip. Okay, let's do this. I was looking for red. At this point, I was... Um... Install Python 3 pip. Do I need to just do that other one again? There was nothing changed. Trouble.local. Yeah, no kidding. Um, there was nothing changed when I ran that. So why are we still getting an error here then? Yeah, no module named pip. Do I need to reboot because of the um, environment stuff? The Python package? Oh. Oh. Package installer for PyCon. This wasn't the printer that FedEx lost, was it? No, that was a Trident. But this is the printer that we went through a similar thing when we I first installed the um, Euclid probe, 
this is the one we earlier in this series that we had trouble with. Oh, is that is that part of it? Did I need to room? Oh, I needed to remove both of those, huh? Before I reinstalled this. Or did that create the shake tune environment? Let's just try. Let's start over. Said I already installed last time. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think that environment folder there. Just rename this printer content. Maybe you're still here. It's at 118. That's nothing to sneeze at for four, almost five hours. Requirement already satisfied. Is that a good thing? Collecting. Okay. This is where it didn't do last time. the whole time we're working on my printer. <laughs> These are the best strains, so much knowledge to learn from. It ends up being a blur going through it because I'm trying to respond. I'm trying to look up things. I'm trying to try stuff, um, but there are, hey John, uh, bits that come out and I remember, oh yeah, we did that thing. Way less stressful for us because we don't have 5 million people yelling at us. I just imagine the people that are sitting there yelling at their screen. Make three stream thumbnails and customize like four 3D models. Take away, remove all EMVs before reinstalling anything in the Clipper. That is absolutely true. It's a new thing that I didn't even realize how it worked. The main outcome, don't give up, it can be fixed. We've proven that three times now. We've done that three times now. Good point, primarily when changing the root environment. <laughs> Seven times. <laughs> on this printer, this printer has been three times all on its own. technology. Yep. Mm. How long is this install? Does anybody know? My, my beard gets a little thinner too, because I end up with a pile of hairs down here from doing this. <laughs> I 
It's as good as our jobs, a combination of persistence, and I wonder what would happen if, or YOLO, YOLO, let's hit the button, YOLO. Okay. So go in here, reconnect, should have a, a shake tune folder now. With stuff. And does, do we have a bunch of, of macros somewhere? Yep. Okay. Whew. Can you just make it shake a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Absolutely. Um, so I think just a, we'll just ignore the screen going funky and I'll fix that off camera. Got to be right on the pole. <laughs> That's true. It's true. No changing your votes. There, I ended the poll. <laughs> 71%. Have we edited? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, I can double check, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I put um, shake tune in here. Yep, there it is. There it is right there. Screen should just be reinstall Clipper screen. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Um, now we should probably do a quick um, QGL. Rith, <laughs> you're back. We got it. Five hours after we started this whole thing. Shaking tune our macros. I should start using macros instead of commands. Well, now it's now it's deciding to go. I came in like an hour and a half or so ago. Belt shaper time. We're gonna do one thing. We're gonna run something from Shaken Tin. And then we're gonna leave it for next week to actually look at any of it. <laughs> it's getting some extra retries here. One of five more hours of content, so let's push it to bookworm. <laughs> No, because we've learned everything now. It would be quick and smooth sailing. Quick and smooth sailing. Oh, I got... I got files. I think I got I got blaster files. Just looking at an email. What's that Google Drive? <laughs> that was not intentional. Do you honestly understand a lot more about how Clipper Moonraker? Yeah, so do I. So do I. At least at the ten thousand foot level now, instead of thirty. I'm going to go through and revise my um, my speeds and everything here for <laughs> QGL and homing and stuff. Well, homing has to stay because it's sensorless, but the QGL and everything needs to needs to get updated. Ah. Too invested. And I can't go to bed until I see a shake. <laughs> We haven't even done the accelerometer query. <laughs> Let's do a home all and put it back in the center. Science sniper, welcome. You know, there are people who went to bed when we started and are probably getting up. <laughs> I mean, five hours of sleep is probably what some of, some of the folks who started this get. Um, where are we? Are we in the center? Yes, we are in the center. Um, I need to do the accelerometer query. 
All right, did I spell it right? Unknown command. I did not. Building my 2.4. What was that? I'm not even going to try to. Oh, just one L. Okay. <laughs> Unknown. What? Did it change? Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. Because I forgot to uncomment my... Oh, jeez. Ah. <sighs> Okay, save and restart. Home all. I'm not going to do a QGL. We're home and all and we're shaking it. I forgot to enable the, the, the config file that has the accelerometer stuff in it. So now we're getting results. So it's working. So what do I want to do? I want to do the belt shaper calibration. Is that what I want right there? I use beacons Excel so it doesn't work with all the shake and tunes commands. Belt shaper. Is there options here? Oh, frequency stuff. I'm just gonna run the plain old. It's a shaking. It's shaking. It doesn't actually only ADXL 345 supports all the options currently. Beacon to Excel, so don't know. Shaking, shaking. We can worry about proper order and such later. Oh yeah. Now you did it, you scared it. Oh, installed a, installed a Pi 5. Should I use fluid, main seal, or octoprint? Which is best preferred? Um, have the things, there are little things with like, camera stuff right with the pi 5 that aren't quite right or video stuff um you might be uh, fluid or mainsail i guess is the answer i would have for you but you might want to look up any of the little things you might want to pay attention to with a pi 5 we can't oh it's yeah it's it's not very loud I'm just gonna home and shake it. Yep. <laughs> I can do it without key out now. Yep. It's gonna give you your relative belt tension. However, your gantry may not be level, so don't give it none. None. We're we're gonna look at a graph and then we're gonna go to bed. We're gonna look at a graph, then we're gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> What's up, Nero Q? Now it's got to do the other one. That was just one. I like about a key out, but it messes up permissions for me. Yep. Purely to have done it. I just, I think, I think the way I am, I would be more frustrated when something isn't working with Kiao than 
just doing the commands manually. So that's just me. Just me. Yeah, I knew it did both. I just didn't didn't pay attention to where whether it was trying to do both of them in that first time. Should have more functionality, but I've never had an issue with it so far. I don't have, like I said, I don't have an issue with it. It's. I use manual screwdrivers and I type my commands out. Wow, I copy and paste too. But I don't copy and paste groups of commands. It doesn't do the same exact stuff. There are other things that it does. There's little details that are different. Okay. So now it's going to run, it's going to process that info. And how do I know when it's done? Will it tell me in the, in the console here? Oh, there we are. Say finish. The younger ones don't know the fun we had with DOS 3.x. Better have your mouse off of that button. What button? What button is it on? Oh. <laughs> Tells you where to find the file. Oops. So. Cleaning. Shake tune. Command shake tune. Run input shaper while you are looking at the graphs. Run input shaper, it's in the shake tune photos. Let's go to the results. I'm, I'm, yeah, oh, there's results. And results. And are we ready? What are we, what are we looking at? Nope, doesn't. Um, let's download this so I can zoom in. Not bad, belt B, B belt could be tighter. Um, let's hold a second. Let's hold that thought. Um, So you, you say about 84% estimated similarity is 84%. B belt could be tighter. I want it before we leave. I do want to do a tiny bit of an analysis here because, um, so B amplitude is lower. Um, but what I wanted to do is go in here and move. I've been scratching my head with hot ends all night, realized I only put 12 volt fan instead of, ooh. Um, I want to move this back there. And I want to, so B belt, so B belt is this one, right? B, A, B, yeah. B belt is this one. And I want to see what the what this shows. 
So it says this one should be a little less. So um, you can't see that. Let's, uh, there we are. So that is right at 22.3. It's right at 2.3, maybe a smidge under. I wanted to see if we can see that. You say that B-belt should be tighter. Let's see if we can see that on here. Oops. Well, yeah. We do see that here. It's two point, just over 2.4. That seems like a big difference there for it to have been, or it's right at 2.4 now. So after we went through all this, there is a, when we first did this, it was closer than that. We would have seen it on here, but this one is less. I'm scratching my head with hot ends all night. Um, what, I, I don't know how much this would mean. I'm just gonna go that much, I guess. Let's see it until this says 2.4. Yeah, that's right, right there. Okay. Exercise, yeah, that's where I was gonna go. These are brand new. So things are kind of settling in. It may raise the amplitude a little more. Also the 100 hertz peak may indicate something else, but it would need to run input shaper to verify. And with that, The 130 of you that are still here, thank you. Um, we made it through another tiring troubleshooting session, but we made it through victorious. Um, I, I'm gonna come back to it, Ref. We're gonna we're gonna cover this next week. Um, you did, Chris. <laughs> You're the, the end of a five hour stream on a, on a Tuesday, which is not supposed to happen, um, but we had to do it. So thanks. We had a avalanche of gifted memberships today, new members. So um, go check out anyone that's new. Go check out the um, Saturday's build. It was a lot of fun with the Sakura 240. Thanks Polymaker for the filament giveaway and huge, huge, huge. Thank you for all you that stuck around and gave suggestions and the, um, to get this fixed so we will be on the rook on sunday so i hope to see you there have a good rest of your week and enjoy the build bye